aggressive driver and uh, yeah you don't it's just unnecessary to pick up damage like that you're probably going to gain a little bit of time in the lap but over the course of a four hour race of course you can get the optional repairs but often it doesn't get fully repaired so it can really cost you down the straight so these drivers I'm a bit surprised that they're attacking these curves so uh, happily it's, and, uh, like, yeah. it's like what Alex was saying before isn't it it doesn't take too much it, take a, it only takes a bad bounce suddenly you're um you're damaged and you know accumulation of damage over four hours well it's not something you really want to um want to have yeah absolutely Kini though with a five second lead over uh ava simsport with a janos sturtz in that car and um yeah janos looking pretty solid up there haven't seen too much of him so far kept his nose clean but, uh, oh, he's, he's struggling with the rear yeah. look. Yeah. Oh dear. And the, the uh, LMP2 cars are coming through behind them as well. It's a shame we don't have a few more LMP2s. And um, to see the contrast between them and the LMP1s a little bit more, but about um, about a minute behind at this stage. So what's that? That's well, it's over 10 seconds a lap. It's crazy the speed of the LMP1 cars. Um, We've just had a note through from Race Control saying that the incident between car 702, that's the Sim Experience Element Sim Racing Water car. Is it water? It's Ooh. something on the thing. So, yeah, uh, it's Samuel Prince in the F13 Sim Sport car just went straight across at the uh, chicane. Continue point. Sorry, uh, is it water? It's Yeah, it is. It, is. it just fits on the screen. Yeah, my screen. Yeah. Um, and car 23, <laughs> the Ava Sim Sport car, uh, the. Yeah, car 23, that is uh, Pascal Sticks. And 702, Marcus Walmer. So, race controller looking at that. I'm not exactly sure why. Did you see anything? No, not that I can remember. But, uh, yeah, we'll wait to see what the outcome of that is. I think they've got quite a wide variety of uh, penalties they can give in this series. So, um, yeah, and a, a drive through round here is really costly mm. because the pit lane's so long. So, um, yeah, could be a, a yeah really hit, well, real hindrance to these drivers well also that's the car that was on pole position so the 702 so it's not going well for them already down to 8th place uh, Pascal sticks all of a sudden really close to the race leader uh, he was oh yeah he was 4 seconds fast on that lap so what a problem for Volker Mayfeld in the Audi, I can't see any damage on that Audi, but uh, the gap now down to one second. So uh, must have got caught up in some traffic and some. Uh, oh, and he very nearly runs into the back of the poor GT. That's the difficulty with the um, acceleration in these cars, isn't it? That you just, you need to have complete faith in the GT to go the right way. I'm just gonna have a little look back and just see if I can figure out why um, uh, Volker might have had an issue. So let's have a little look at that. It doesn't seem that he's got. Oh, he went straight on at the chicane. Oh, right. Okay. He missed the uh, very anti uh, retrofilio. So, and Marcus Walmuth has been given a drive through penalty for avoidable contact. So, evidently, that's what happened. And look at this now the Battleford leads well and truly on the nose to tail up there. And um, Maeve Melfelt. He's, um, he's he's hanging on by his fingernails here at the minute, but look at the look at the damage on the rear wing. Oh, of, oh, hello, what's that? Yeah. In the background, that's Nicholas Souza, and he was flying through the air. Sam, he hits the sleeping policeman, goes for a wild ride and into the barrier. Yeah, and you just saw the end. Oh wow, that's incredible there, and that's a big impact. Should be okay since he hasn't got too much steering damage but not what he needed at all. Oh, he can barely get it turned around either, which means, which makes me think that he's having difficulty turning that at all. Now he gets it round. Oh, that's not looking too pretty though. Um, I was going to say before that, before I got distracted uh, by a flying Ferrari, was um, that on the start, I don't know if you saw it, but the 23 uh, got a... Uh, the Avery Simspot car got a really big hit from the side by one of the other cars who had a good start and obviously didn't really look where they were going. And I wonder if that's what's caused that rear wing damage at the on the left-hand side. 
Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I didn't quite see um, all what, what happened at the start, but it, it, they seemed to kind of concertina into one another, didn't they? Yeah, um, yeah. Different jars kind of seemed to kind of accelerate at different times. So um, it did cause quite a lot of confusion. Didn't see too much what happened. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Marcus Woolmer, who got that penalty, was involved in that as well. So, but that's um, one of the reasons why these cars, you know, that's one of the characteristics of these cars is that there can be a big disparity at any given time, depending on whether they're deploying the curves or not. Yeah, yeah. And the, the ERS, and the, it's um, possibly you might see drivers having deployment issues as well when they're in battle, so they might run out of ERS. And, you know, that might be the difference between winning and losing. Yeah, and if you are in a in a battle, uh, for example, Sticks right now, following Mayfield, Mayfeld, he can perhaps um, save a little bit of energy now and then uh, over the course of the laps and then deploy all at once in a real uh, attack on uh, on Mayfeld on a lap and that could get him in the position. So it's all it's very strategic, these LMP1 cars. Adds a really good element to it, I think. Um, and yeah, really difficult to do to decide and make that actually oh. slow. Don't know so what happened there. It must be a slowdown penalty. I was just about yeah, to say it. that um Oh yeah, it's, he's cut the first part of the the Roger all four wheels across the um sorry the Retfilio four wheels across the first curb. Now we're just about to say that it looked like Melfeld was um was going back to the uh, the pace that he showed at the beginning of the race, but now he's got it to do again. Alex, how are we looking, mate? Yeah, we, we are we are back up, and just uh, yeah, apologies to that as well. So, just uh, I hate to say it, but there's been a new update, and it's causing a hell of a lot of problems with the uh, streaming software and getting the broadcast to come live on YouTube. So, but for those that are watching, we have got everything from the start. I've got it saved locally and i'll re-upload the race at the end as well so you've got the whole thing from the very start so yeah apologies for that but uh yeah we have, we have got a local copy like we said at the start we have technical there's always some technical issues isn't there <laughs> uh, i remember as well something else you said at the start was you were going to go through the um yeah the what overlay and the, the the things that you you're seeing out there yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's bring it back, bring it on. So, uh, obviously, we have um, the different classes out there right now. So, obviously, the red is the uh, LMP1, blue, LMP2. Green is GTE, but GTE in itself is actually split into um, into two, two classes. We have um, the pro class and the AM class as well. So, I am able to break down your GTE, uh, your GTE class there as well see so you've got green and yellow there so you can see actually fourth overall um it you know, is actually our pro um is our am leader as well so great job from them elliot roberts doing a good job in the 78 car so but uh, yeah so that's kind of what that what you're uh, what you're looking at um as far as all of the different classes and things like that should make a little bit more sense the slashes to the right of the class color are the team color um I'm not 100% sure if the drivers have fully adopted that, but um, hopefully we will uh, start to see that go as the season comes along. So, uh, where well, we've got a couple of different cars out there on the same team, I expect we'll fully see them um, all sort of having the same little slash. And uh, yeah, we'll have when we've got cars on the same piece of circuit, we'll also have like the um, the battle scenario come up in the bottom right hand corner as well, which you can see there. Uh, but yeah, that gives a bit of a bit of an overview onto what's going on, and um, yeah, so the teams there um, on the uh, standings panel will show gained and lost and gaps and things like that there, um, and then we have the lap time sliding out on the left uh, as well, so you can see roughly what sort of lap times people are doing. I think that's just about everything. All right, you can see um, how hard. Pascal Stix is having to work to um, try and press this advantage over Volker Melfeld, who's, who's had another um, another couple of bad laps, really. I mean, he was in the 30s, Sam. So, 
Sorry, Andrew, I just need to cut Sorry, you off uh, very, very quickly as well, because there was a, just a little move there. So that was um, for uh, 20th and 21st overall. They're still pretty much side by side as well in the GTE class. But yeah, yeah, 10th and 11th in the class, so down into turn one as well, trying to get the place back. The inside, Sebastian couldn't quite hold on to it, so finds himself in 11th after that, and actually got a horrible run out of um, out of turn one there as well. And uh, he's actually already um, nine tenths of a second behind. So yeah, disastrous run coming out of there. Sorry, Andrew. Back to you with the uh, with the with the leaders, and I'll jump up well, to uh, to those guys. Well, yeah, the um, Volker. He was in the he was in the thirties for most of the opening um, ten laps, and then the last few laps he's had one lap in the thirty fours, one lap in the thirty fives, and two in the thirty threes, and then he's just done another one in the thirty four two. Um, all over the place at the minute, Sam. Yeah, on that last lap, he very nearly missed the first chicane. So he locked up the tyres, trying to avoid the car ahead and um, barely made the corner. Like he was fully locked all four tyres and he lost about three seconds, basically coming to a halt and then having to turn the, turn the car pretty much like a, 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 on its turning circle just to make the corner. So that's where he lost some of that time. But the thing is, he's, he's, see this, really. he's pushing hard for, you know, an extra half a second or an extra quarter of a second here, a quarter of a second there. In the process, he's losing three, four, five seconds on some of these laps. So he, he's he's just overdriving at the minute. And um, Alex was saying, you know, earlier on about we're on about the curbs, uh, Alex, while you were trying to sort out the um, the video. And um, it, it really isn't worth it in a four-hour race to be smashing the curbs and having these marginal braking points where you may or may not meet, meet, make the corner. No, no, exactly. You know, um, it just all adds up, and you you work for you know you you're working for tenths, and you're losing seconds. Yeah, yeah, big time. Especially with a couple where you get slow down penalties as well. Um, so you, you, know, you just don't want to be doing that. So that's where the endurance racing comes into its own. You know, sometimes the consistency over like that raw tenth of a second pace can make all of the all the difference. You know. Well, as you alluded to at the beginning of the broadcast. And you've got someone like Martin Van Luzenord coming through the field. You can't be just throwing away 10 seconds over the course of, you know, six, seven laps. Yeah. Because he will, he, he won't do that. Yeah, and even yeah. if you're, let's say... I mean, he might do it once, but he won't do it, he won't do it that many times. And even if you're like half a second a lap faster, that's only going to get you, what, two minutes during the race? So it's all about that consistency rather than ultimate pace. Half a second usually would be an easy win, whereas... You know, if you can uh, save a bit of fuel or make a few less errors, and of course, if you think the damage as well, within an hour, I imagine some of these drivers are going to have half a second a lap of uh, damage anyway. So that uh, there'll be repairs going to be for some. Yeah, exactly. So it's much better just to um, make, take uh, take care of the car, and not make any errors. And and you know, looking at this is the sort of race where we we need to sort of analyse it really in d deeper detail, but. Um, Van Luzenord, we were talking about him. Two tenths of a second, he was quicker than the second place car that we were talking about, Volker Melfeld. Volker has actually closed in on um, the Avis Sims. Boy, oh, he nearly makes contact with the Ferrari. I mean, that was marginal, wasn't it? Uh, Suarez Rivero, Victor Suarez Rivero. Rebellion Team 2 was, the, um, was nearly the victim there in 19th place. But yeah, two tenths of a second a lap. It's not going to get you massively far, Alex, even over four hours. But you know, if you if you add if you add the fact that if if you're quarter of a second quicker, plus that you don't make any mistakes, then that you could see that lap coming back. Yeah, yeah, quite easily. Just uh, just going to slowly chip away at it, it, I think, isn't he? How many times have we seen? You know, you can make a metaphor for this for Volker's race at the minute. Um, you can almost allude it to the. BSRTC, the British and British Touring Car Championship season, because you know an endurance race can take a similar pattern to a season, Alex. In that, some drivers they just plug away with you know solid results, top fives, top tens, and then some you have really good lap where you pull out a second. Some you have a really bad lap where you lose two seconds. 
we know, we all know who wins out at the end. It's, it's Dave Baker who wins, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> or it might be yourself. You never know this time. It won't be if you don't make it past the first uh, the first two corners, though. Yeah, you know. I mean, that wasn't your fault. But <laughs> the way it goes isn't it, sometimes. So we've got the um, LMP2s now actually going a lap down to um, to the LMP1. So 22 laps. Well, so. taking another two um, two thirds of a second out of um, Pascal sticks on that lap again. So when he when he has a clean lap, it's a very good one usually, and it's race winning pace, but. Maybe needs to settle down a tiny bit. Even just moving in after the after the lap in the traffic looks a bit looks a bit dicey sound sometimes for him. He's really on it. Yeah, that's probably got him maybe half a tenth there. But you know, it, it, even if there's a half a percent chance of that failing, then over the course of a race, then uh, it's probably not worth it, is it? So uh, <laughs> still bringing it down um, two two seconds to Pascal Sticks in that oh, Revent Racing um, car. That's um, Mayfield, and then. Pascal Sticks in the Aber Simsport 09 car. Um, the Sticks has just been super consistent so far, hasn't he? I wouldn't say he's been any faster than Mayfield at any point of the race, but he's just been Not super really. consistent. Yeah. And um, managed to, he was about five seconds behind at one point, and now he's by about two seconds. One thing I think we need to look at in GTE is um, that Nathan Parkinson, after he had his spin at turn one, um, him coming through the field again. And he is in 17th, which is seventh, uh, sixth in class. And he's closing in on Jose Antonio Amoso in the world of sim racing GTE car. And he's got that gap down to about three seconds and um, lapping. Lapping about a second quicker on that lap. So we'll have to see how far he can get Alex in this one. Yeah. He had to wait so long as well, so it's quite a drive already, and we're only at the you know, sort of 35 minute mark. So. I think he'll look back on that, and he'll think he, he'll wish he'd just done a three-point turn on that one. Yeah, yeah, rather than because waiting. he, he was Going. waiting, and he, if he'd have just turned round to the left, he could have rejoined the circuit really, sim really easily. Yeah, definitely. You sometimes you think like, oh, it's only going to be a few seconds. I won't get it done anyway. You know, <laughs> they just keep on coming, don't they? Like a little, a little reverse makes all the difference. <laughs> I think we've seen that. Uh, we've seen that before. Well, we've ended up in in the uh, in the gravel at turn one in the past as well. Um, let's have a look at LMP two and just see how those guys are getting on. <laughs> Alex, you were right when you were saying it's going to be a good battle because only a couple of seconds apart and um, Ho Antonio Jose Catatena Amezcu, there we go, it's easy for me to say, is, um, well, he's closing in. Oh, that's not it. That's not him at all. Sorry, wrong car. Chris, <laughs> Sant well. Chris Santizo. I know, it was good, wasn't it? Chris Santizo is... Um, closing in and closed in by eight tenths of a second on that previous lap so um, it's on in that class yeah they've no been nip and tuck all race sorry Sam they've been nip and tuck all race as well you know there's barely been anything with them and to be fair the gaps that have that have opened up and then closed back down again has mainly been due to traffic as well so I think uh, a lot of this is going to come down to like strategy who can get you know in and out of the pits the quickest and save enough fuel so you've got a short short splash when you need it kind of thing so yeah it could be uh, could be interesting uh, race to see how this pans out i think peter smith just has the slight edge on pace 10th or so here and there but not a great deal um but seems to be struggling a little bit more with the traffic than uh, than uh, what chris is doing i've just thought of an, another little bit to add sam to the point i was making earlier about consistency and with the tire model how this is as well you know you lock up here you miss a braking zone there you have a half spin you know just trying a little bit too hard and it just ramps up that tire temperature and you really struggle to get it back so it's another reason to just drive calmly and smoothly because you get exponential gains at the end of the stint yeah absolutely and uh of course the, these are long stints for these drivers these are um hour long stints i think for the gtes and the hbds and then probably about 45 minute stints for the lmp1 so the tires has got to last for a while. Round here, the overheating tire model 
probably doesn't affect them as much as other circuits because there's such long straights where you can kind of cool the tyres back off again. But when you've got such a little uh, rear downforce as you do out here, uh, it can be quite problematic. And Riley Thompson just gone straight on at the uh, chicane. Didn't quite see that one. Oh, which, just want to um, is he? Oh, total downforce racing, number 11, yeah. I just wanted to oh, pick up ran. Martin Van Luzenor just did fastest lap of the race that time by, so jumped on board with him for a for a lap here as well. He was um, 1.8 quicker than the leader, Alex, as well, so he's obviously got that, that uh, car dialed in. Porsche looking good out there. He's, he's right behind the Reverend... Ooh, oh, he's the, he's uh, right behind Thompson ooh. now, actually. But of course, he's a lap down on Thompson. He is. So he's going to be unlapping himself here. But got some work to do to unlap the whole field and then uh, try and get back to him. But he's already starting to unlap himself with 38 minutes of the race gone. So here he comes. Got the energy. Uses it down there into um, Ascari. Lovely line through there. And of One course, thing I'll say might about a chance for Thompson to just stick with him. Yeah, exactly. Just try and spot the lines where he's using his energy and stuff like that because that seems he might to be, be the key. Back through the whole field with him. Quite, yeah, quite possibly. That's one thing with this car is knowing when and where to use the energy to get the best out of it and um, making sure that you've got plenty off track there for, uh, for Martin as he runs a little bit wide coming out of Parabolica. But yeah, that's the lap and uh, doesn't take any time in this car whatsoever. I think uh, as well back to the back to the sort of endurance racing mentality of it. You, you sort of think of it, Sam, as like a like a boxer or an MMA fighter. You know, as one who comes out swinging for the haymakers in the first couple of rounds, and another one who's you know throwing the jab in every now and again, conserving the energy for the the opening rounds. You always see them at the end come on really really strong, and I feel like I feel like that's another way of looking at it. Yeah, absolutely. If you make a, a couple of nice overtakes in, uh, early on here. It's so easy just to lose it again. Of course, we've got the second drivers to get in the cars, and uh, if they're you know a little bit slow or make an error, all your good work can come undone. So oh, it's yeah. really not worth you know the risks of uh, bold overtakes. And round here, overtaking is quite simple. Well, not simple, but uh, easier than uh, maybe some other circuits. So there's just no point in risking it. And uh, yeah, like we've been saying all along. Uh, preserving the uh, car, preserving the aerodynamics because uh, that can really cost you. All that we've been talking about as you know, Alex, this is one of the reasons why we absolutely love endurance racing because the whole race can, the complexion of the race can absolutely Leads change in. once there's a whole different set of drivers out there. Yeah, oh, hu hugely, yeah, and leaders in, so we'll see now whether or not there will be a driver change or, or um, Everson Sports going to just sort of stick with uh, Pascal and uh, see how he can he can do double stint. Are they going to take tyres? Are they not? Can't see the car being jacked up. I have to say. So this may just be a a, a bit of fuel. Well, it is a tyre friendly circuit, Monza, compared to some of the others. Might suffer a little with the rears, but in general, um, we've seen Grand Prix where drivers have gone over half the length of the race right. without a pit stop. So yeah, and he's away. So. Interesting to see. Speaking of the Formula One, of course, it starts quite soon, but um, don't worry, you won't be getting any spoilers from us on this uh, channel. We can't promise you anything if Adam turns up. Yeah, well, yeah. But um, <laughs> if you're looking at it, well, I wonder if. Um, Wonder who's going to be the spoiler in this race because I reckon Ava Simsport and Reverend Racing are going to be going for it for, for pretty much the whole four hours, Sam. Yeah, seems that way. But um... oh, Ferrari off, Janos Sturge. Um, he, he's managed to survive somehow, but that was a wiggle to end all wiggles coming through Gerv Della Roggia. Yeah, but well onto the gravel there, and uh, yeah, he did so well. To avoid the bad day, just do it again. Well, he's just gone. He's just gone wide at Lesmo. I feel like, I feel Alex, like the drivers don't really care much for the track limits out there today. No, no, and I think uh, you know Lesmo not so much. <laughs> I suppose they're only risking themselves by doing that, aren't they? Like you only, yeah. you only need a little bit of uh, bad luck on the gravel, and then that's that's it. Everyone seems to just sort of take well, we, full advantage there, you know. 
Well, we saw what happened to Scott Newton, didn't we? On um, yeah, in AOR Formula Renault on, on Friday night, was he just went a little bit wide onto the grass, and um, next thing you know, he's he's digging himself out of the barrier. Mayfeld and uh, Sticks just went side by side. Mayfeld just pitted from the lead of the uh, LMP1. Sticks just got ahead. They were side by side going into the chicane, uh, but Pascal Sticks retains the lead pretty much the same gap as there was before um so you know not too important like i was saying earlier but um yeah sticks retaining the lead and this battle should just carry on because they haven't oh. had any drive swap they've just gone past govan keeney who's the leader of the gte class and um he went a bit deep into the curve de la Rogia. again had to uh, vault over the curbs and that's putting um, a third lap on the GT field. And LMP2 is looking tastier and tastier, Alex, by the second. Oh, well, it was until... Oh. It's actually been a change for the lead, hasn't there? They've actually swapped around. It was um, Pete Smith that was leading, so we missed that one. Let's see if I can find where that was. I was about um, to say this now. viewer. I was about to say that Smith was struggling, and um, Sam might be able to tell us why. Uh, well, yeah, Sam Tisso, just looking back at his laps on lap 24, he had a uh, 139 when he's usually in the 136s. So I assume that was the uh, the point where he uh, lost the lead. And um, no, sorry. So, yeah, Sam, yeah, Sam Tisso. Um, yeah, it, uh, that's an odd one because Sam Tisso had him there and uh, Smith must have had a couple of errors. Comedy of errors potentially um it, it, there's nothing worse actually is there when you're trying to get past the guy for so long or you're trying to make catch up a gap he makes a mistake you go through you make a mistake they go back through you just sort of go oh what's going on here but um it's happened to everybody and um will continue to happen as long as there's motor racing so frustrating see um, riley thompson coming through the traffic there just um, in car 11, total downforce racing. He's about seven seconds behind the nine car. That's Oya Hugo. Jugo, one or the other. Yeah, and he's right behind uh, Rodrigo in Prozzo de Silva in the BO racing car. And I think that uh, BO car just managed to jump uh, Oya in the pit stop so uh, yep. yeah then up to, up to third and that's going to be an interesting battle wait for uh, Martin Van Lusen or, uh he's in the pits right now so uh, to be fair he's going to take a while to catch up to them a lot but um, he is no doubt going to be fighting with them perhaps an hour or two time yeah Van Lusen very briefly went onto the lead lap um, so Ooh, side by side for the lead it won't be anymore as uh, yeah here we go then. Oh, was that, a, was that a nudge? No, it wasn't. Oh, it was wow. Camera and go, oh, he's missed the corner. Pascal sticks. Oh, dear. Mayfeld oh. launched, launched himself over the curb, and I think that could possibly be a bit of damage. So, sticks missed the corner altogether, and Mel felt absolutely. Oh, yeah, he. He outbraked himself majorly, then just hit the edge of the sleeping policeman, Alex, which just looked like it hit square on the, the, the under tray and just absolutely, um, just, it, it looked helpless there for a second. Yeah, yeah, it did, just smashing up in the air, didn't it? So, cost him a lot of time as well. Can the floors be damaged in iRacing, do you know? Is, is it possible? Yeah, you can. The diffuser can be, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know to what extent. You don't mm. really know with the damage model, but yeah, certainly. Don't really know like what what effects it would have, but it can be it can potentially be done because they're very low. I mean, they're they're like they're like Formula One cars in terms of how low to the ground they are. That I mean, I'm just trying to think how they're about 50 mil off the ground at the front, but obviously once you start getting a bit downforce on that, drops to about 30, so not quite as low, but we're only talking like 10 mil off. Yeah, yeah. And that's how they've got so much downforce because it's a big, you know, they're quite big profiles, these cars. And it kind of sticks, it sticks it to the ground. 
Rob Sutherland and Sebastian Gesher in so you've got car one you've got the sim racing fire car and you've got the last minute racing car and they're going into battle and um, it looks actually like Sutherland's closing in on Gesha. I think these two have been glued together for the entire race. Um, I think Dmitry Denisov was, was was with these two a little bit earlier on. Oh, He's yeah. got a four-second lead. Uh, but Sutherland and Gesha have just been super close all the way through. And uh, I, I can see this one lasting for a while. But they're keeping it clean right now, it seems. I haven't seen any instance between this lot and their cars look pretty healthy so uh could be uh sh should have good speed in those cars still and uh that's what you need around here quite a simple livery on the um on the 95 ferrari but i do like it sometimes the simple ones are the best ones Alex, can you put your finger on why there's not that many four GTs out there? Not really. Um, I mean, Could I be don't. A racing reason for it, or? Yeah, I don't know what the BOP's like in the uh, in the GTs. To be honest, and it might. I mean, I know if the Ferrari. We've obviously watched a fair amount of GT3 uh, races recently with the World GT Series, and of course, the Ferrari is so fast and straight line in that. And I wonder if that follows through and into the um into Oh, and GTEs. it could just be a track-specific... Yeah, possibly. Maybe. But I, I, to be honest, I would have thought that the drivers would have had to have just chose one car with the series. That's something yeah. we'll have to confirm with the with the admins. So we'll see. Because at in Le Mans, there, we, you know, it was quite an even spread, wasn't it, last year? Yeah, it was. It was. So, yeah, I'm quite surprised to see that. I mean, um, Ferrari's... Because are, they're handled uh, differently, so they might just suit different drivers in different ways, you know? Exactly. I mean, I know um, Antoine um, from our team, Higlin, he won, of course, the GTE championship and he was driving the um, Ford a lot last oh, season. Yeah, yeah. So it's not like it's a slow car or anything like that. So, yeah, it's not going to be uh, entirely Should down. Every preference? That. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I, I will say that, that, you know, I do like the look of the Ford. It still looks like the Angry Birds pig from the back. Yeah, it does. Um, but. I've got to say, Sam, I absolutely adore the Ferrari, the way the way that it looks and, just, yeah, just the way it looks out there. Yeah, absolutely. I think the uh, Ferrari, for, since it was launched, really, has had a bit of an advantage. I think, um, not quite sure what the strengths and weaknesses are. I think it's through the slow corners and maybe down the straights, which, of course, is what you need around here. I think the Ferrari has a bit of an advantage and around most circuits, it seems to be kind of three tenths to about half a second. So quite a big advantage but personally I prefer the way that the uh, Ford drives and uh, you know it's always good to be in the uh, in the minority car I guess out there so um, Ch oh yeah chat's so, kind of in agreement as well really sort of track specific selection kind of thing and that uh, there's not an awful lot in in them so yeah I'm sure we'll see that um, sort of mixed up a little bit maybe later on in the season and you've got um, the uh, Peter Smith is in now from the lead of LMP2 um, Chris Santizo just came in on the previous lap and he's just going through uh, he's just gone through Lesmo he's going up towards Ascari so we'll see we'll see if he can um, if he can take the lead back but th this battle like I said I think with just over three hours to go it's going to get pretty interesting out there let's see what um, Smith does in the pits then can see and it, it seems like an eternity alex at this track doesn't it uh, everybody's does. going past so quickly just brought it up on the minimap as well you can just see the two cars so smith coming out of the parabolica so fully up to um sorry um chris up to speed and smith still waiting long long stop it gets going but of course there comes um comes well he's doing he, nearly 200 miles an hour yeah. so that, that's what that's the difference there no, straight through no question so yeah delta i racing just blows through it, it appears, Sam, that the um, LMP2 cars are pretty much, they, they're nearly a match for top speed with the LMP1s. But maybe not, obviously not acceleration, but... Yeah, it's the acceleration where the um, LMP1s can make the advantage. Um, and then these HPDs still got very good 
um, top end speed and Kostyan if he wants to go a bit more downforce as well. In that pit stop, Pete Smith lost about nine seconds to Chris Santiso in, uh, with his pit stop. Um, I wonder if that was just maybe taking some repairs just Ooh. to... Oh, and who was that off the track? The Porsche just off. It was Martin Van Lusenau oh. going very wide on the... Um, oh, and right again. Martin has pitted now as well. So, so that, what happened there? Oh, it hits the kerb. Big wiggle. And I'm not sure, Alex, how he kept that out of the wall. Yeah, see if I can get that back on replay for you. Here we go. Yep, so coming in. Bit of traffic ahead, maybe. Uh, just taking his mind off it. Hits. Oh, you know what? That kerb is an absolute swine you know you can you can <laughs> cut it like that um just because it helps open up the second part but you have to be so careful that it doesn't just bounce you to the left like that yeah mine got away with one there because it's so easy that the rear can just lose and i have to say all of the technology on the lmp1 porsche porsche and the audi make a heck of a difference in that situation um it's got lateral slip control as well as all the traction Yay. control and ABS, so huge help there. Oi, oi, oi. <laughs> well, Peter Smith nearly ran into the back of Van Lusenod, and then he's lost it on the way into the uh, to turn one. I'm going to watch that back on replay was. now as well. Yeah. I swear the amount of times we've seen Jazz nearly run into the back of others going into that turn one, and then oh. the I think I've seen it five or six times so far today, particularly in the HPDs and the LMP1s. And he uh, may have locked the rears there, and that might, yeah, might I think have been it why, was, he, um, yeah. why he bit the dust. But you just think, why don't you leave a little bit more space there, try to line up the corner. I think it was just a bit of a misjudgment, perhaps, and it is difficult to judge where the car head's going to break there. I Could wonder if anyone in the chat actually can confirm this. What's the weight difference like in the LMP2? Because obviously that HPD hasn't been run in a long time, and it's quite light, that one. Um, that and I think it we'll might probably... be it's break. Are you trying to get that maybe it's braking performance is better? Or... Yeah, exactly. Than the LMP1, so he's probably braked late, assuming that the LMP1 where we normally breaks. Yeah. exactly assuming the LMP1 is going to break just as late as him. But of course, it probably weighs a boatload more. Um, well, because it's got all the batteries and all the yeah, motors exactly. and exactly. everything in LMP2s now are a lot heavier. Like, for example, when we when we talk about, say, some of the other sort of series that run that LMP2, so like Neo and pieces, people like that, they actually add, I think, at least 100 kilos to the car to make that, it that's, match. That's the roof, basically, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's to match it to what a current LMP weight, P2 weights are. So as well as um, Jose Antonio um, pops himself into the pits. pits. So, yeah, I'm wondering if that's what it was. So that's probably the first time Smith's been tucked up behind an LMP1, goes into the, probably the heaviest braking point. And actually, the LMP2, slightly better on the brakes there. So the minimum Maybe. weight for an LMP1 car, a hybrid car, is 870 kilograms. And the current minimum weight for an LMP2 car is 930 kilograms. So let me just have a quick look, see what this this um, HPD, the Honda prototype thing is uh, at the moment. Yeah, also the LMP1 is one of the um, ways to save the battery is to not apply all the all the brake at once. Sometimes you want to uh, apply 60% brake and that increases the amount of energy you recover. So that really? might have been a factor okay. as well. Yeah, so it extends the braking zone a little bit. Is that because some of the energy hasn't been released as, as heat on the no, it's just that you're braking for longer, so you, you're region in longer, so your uh, okay. bra braking zone's a bit longer. Yeah, so it's almost like lift and coast, but actually you kind of on the brake. So. All right. Well, I didn't, I didn't actually know that. That's pretty. So it's eight, pretty this is 825 kilos. Is the HPD? So, so it's 105. Yeah, 105 kilos then, which is about 250 pounds. So yeah, it, it, that's. That's pretty, oh, about 230 pounds, I think. So, bit, um, bit of everything going on there, I would assume. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, we finally got to the bottom of that incident. Yeah. <laughs> and the league confirms on the chat as well that the LMP break is better. So, yeah, no faffing waiting for, um, you know, worried about energy or anything like that. See, I'm liking the, I'm liking the chat, um, chat engagement um, this evening, this afternoon, wherever you're watching in the world. Uh, we might as well, um, for those who are new in, We'll just tell them what's going on out here. This is the VTEC Super Series on Apex Racing TV. 
And we would have Sam Fitzpatrick and Alex Simpson in the commentary box for you from the Autodromo Nazionale Monza in Italy. Ciao a tutti to everybody. And um, yeah, we're. Um, I just said hello, everybody, to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so there you go. But still, um, we're having a good race here today. And uh, mm. Sam is. Sorry? So Tony Blanco just going for a move on uh, Rob Sutherland. Sutherland's had quite an action packed race so far, and Sutherland hasn't actually pitted yet, so he just lets Blanco pass. Blanco looking pretty good up there for, uh, I think he. Is he second, potentially? A net second? Not quite sure, but he's certainly quite I think he was top three. Yeah, yeah, he's certainly quite for the three. Yeah. He, he's, third, he's third in pro class currently. Um. But yeah, um, but overall, um, he is a third overall as well. So there you go. <laughs> so, um, interesting yeah. uh, statement coming from Race Control. Car 9, which is Oya Yugo of the Delta I racing team, just received a second warning of the race for blocking. Now, what would that be? I know, I know, you know, obviously I know what blocking is, but what would that be for in an LMP1 car? Would that be potentially. Um, blocking I mean what, what would that be blocking I imagine it that's just racing he was racing he with seem uh, to have had a battle though for a while has he uh, he was racing with Rodrigo in Prato de Silva and he had to overtake him so uh, I might go back on the replay because maybe he Rodrigo's weaved around a, a bit lot of time. Yeah. yeah and then he had, probably had to defend a bit uh, but he's got good paces Oya uh, down to five and a half seconds to Volker Mayfield who is struggling in this second stint really quick in the first stint had a few errors but in this second stint he just seems to be down on pace and uh he's probably that way he damaged time. he probably has damaged the floor yeah yeah exactly from going over the um that that sleeping policeman really sort of aggressively and uh it wouldn't surprise me alex if he's just looked lacking a bit of downforce out there Because he's been so ever since he did that, he did that on he came out of the pits on lap 28, lap 29, he did a 130.9, mm. lap 30, you can see he lost seven seconds, and ever since then, 32, 32, 32, 33, yeah. 32, 34, 33. Yeah, maybe. So he needs to get himself into the pits, I think, and once the you know his earliest opportunity, so it doesn't affect his overall strategy, and see if he can't get some of those repairs done, but. Yeah, well, that answers the question about your floor damage, doesn't it? Yeah, it could potentially do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, because there's no way he'd be look. Oh, he does have some slight damage to the um, left rear as well, Sam. I don't know if you can see that. If you can see that there, there is a bit of uh, the bodywork is a little bit buckled around the yeah, rear just, wheel. Yeah, just a uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. I don't think that's making too much of a difference. And and maybe yeah. some slight damage to the diffuser as well. Yeah, yeah, and the, the, that would make a that would uh, cost him a bit of time, I think. And uh, yeah, Franz Kane just looking after your car. He's now two seconds a lap slower, or, or maybe not. Yeah, two seconds a lap slower than Martin Van Lusenord, who's uh, fighting his way through. So uh, Martin out there keeping his car clean, and is actually the fastest driver out there right now. So um, watch out for him because he's just kept it clean whilst. Perhaps uh, Volker's just made a couple of errors, which have caused a bit of damage. Just looking at uh, the Racecraft Racing LMP1 uh, team, Martin Van Lewis not in that car. Uh, Boris Spolstra is the second driver for them, so it'll be on. It'll be up to him to continue that charge. Uh, looking at the leaders, then Ava Simsport, Pascal Stix will be handing over to Sven Neumann. Then the Reverend Racing car, Volcom Elfelt, will be uh, handing over to Arjuna Kankipati. And we've actually got uh, Lusenord about to overtake uh, Oya Yugo and uh, Volker Mayfeld in uh, second and third. So whilst he is a lap down, he's making that this time back. And this is quite important now because, uh, if anything, Yugo would quite like him just to uh, stay behind for now. Well... I was just um, going to come to Alex on this one because, you know, the drivers who are a lap in front, they've got every right to defend that position because if they keep him behind, obviously, you know, it, it's a bit captain obvious, but it's a no-brainer that keep him behind now and he definitely won't catch him. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly that. This is, you know, they've got no uh, no reason to let him go whatsoever. So yeah, absolutely. Bend and because um, even know. if you let him go, if you let him go, you run the risk of of him making up him and uh, Boris making up that lap over the next three hours. And the pace he was doing out there, I think he would do as well. So yeah, you've got to delay him as much as you can now. Ah, and Melfort's in the pit, so he's not going to be delaying anything. Um, so he comes in, and I reckon he's had enough of that damage. And now Hugo's left alone to defend against Van Luzenord. For those who um, don't know Alex, obviously there's a lot of good drivers in this field. For oh, Martin, what, make, what makes him... What makes him one of the best drivers in the field? Yeah, uh, I mean, he's just um, he's just ridiculously quick. Of course, he's been in the World Championship, done extremely well in Pro Series, won some races in that. Extremely fast in the Formula Renault. You remember he won the opening season when that car came out and they were clocking up like five and 6,000 uh, strength of field races every week in there. So he's a hell of a driver. And um, yeah, I'm glad to say, you know, he raced with us at Apex Racing UK for a while before... Um, Sort of moving off and doing his own thing and I think he's been at ERT and now again he's doing this uh, racecraft racing which I think is uh, is something that he set up with a bunch of guys that were, were at um, ERT so yes um, good uh, just a good driver good all round driver uh, well you know bad, you're a good nothing good bad good to say driver. about him <laughs> but yeah exactly a, a nice guy as well like uh, you know you're a good driver if you're mixing it up with the likes of Graham Carroll so mm -hmm. and, and, and winning races against him in the same car the only thing I'll say about Martin is he can't pronounce shark. <laughs> <laughs> no, he can't. But we'll leave it. We'll... I said about that, the better, maybe. Maybe we'll get an interview with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is a funny story behind that. You'll have to ask him separately if you see him. <laughs> One weekend at uh, Silverstone at the uh, World Endurance Championship. That's all I'll say. <laughs> that, was a good, that was a good weekend. We had four seasons in that weekend, didn't we? Oh, we did. Yeah. So remember that the, the first day it snowed. Um, he's going past snowed now, though. Pretty... What's that? He's going past as well now, as Martin, so he's trying to pick up that place. So he's not really oh, no. managed to be delayed what? that long. Oh, oh he's no, trying no, yeah. as well. <laughs> he has been. So. Hugo, he's, he's, Hugo probably just realised, well, hang on a minute, I need to stop this guy from coming past because he might potentially be able to threaten me later on in the race. Van Lusenod looked like he was deploying some of his energy coming out of the Curve del Roger. Hugo surely will be on the button to defend now, Sam. Yeah, you'd think so. I think he's well, not on the button, but maybe on uh, utilizing most of his charge. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I think he's uh, used quite a bit of energy on this up already to defend it. I think uh, coming out of the first chicane and also the second chicane, actually, I think he'd put a bit of energy. So I wouldn't be surprised if he's a bit of a sitting duck coming out of the Parabolica. We'll see if uh, Luzon Nord can uh, get the run. He's been quick through the Parabolica as Luzon Nord on the past couple of laps. Actually. And a uh, little bit of traffic as well. And here comes Luzon Nord. Does he have any extra energy to deploy? It looks that way. Here he goes on the outside. Yeah, he, sales fast. Hugo really can't afford to uh, defend too harsh, otherwise he will get a penalty. He's already got two warnings. Might try and come and back up the inside. The inside. Oh, don't, oh. Oh. Well, he, he twitched a little, did um, Hugo, on the way into the uh, first corner. There's Trilio. And, um, yeah, Alex, to be fair to him, he did try and come back there. And, and he's, coming, he's trying to come back now down the... Through the curve of ground in into Roger. Well, I think he needs to do it straight away if he's going to do it. Try and hold him up, Martin, as long as he can, because get Martin half a lap or so. And I goes. feel like he's going to just disappear and, like you say, it's exactly he's what, disappeared so. already. No. But so, that's yeah. the thing. I mean, I've raced these cars, and um, you, you get a bit of a helpless feeling because sometimes because the, the closing speed and the the differences in lap times can be so big, one lap to the next, or even one corner to the next, that you you do you you you'll overtake somebody and then you'll be able to pull two seconds on them but at the same time they might be able to bring that two seconds back just as quickly just because of the way the ERS works and things yeah like that. exactly the hybrid en energy system is so critical for, for lap times here and it's like so you can defend using it as well but you know it's like at some point in the lap it's going to pay you know you're going to it's going to 
you're going to hurt for doing that kind of thing. And you only get a certain amount of charge that you're allowed to use on every lap as well. And that seems to be what it is with the um, enemies ones while we check in with the leader in class and GTE at the moment as well. It seems to be that unlike say like the McLaren Formula One car where actually you've got like a you've got like a battery pack but you are you are allowed to deploy so much per lap you don't get anywhere near that per lap it's more yep. about keeping the battery percentage charge level at a certain point um, otherwise you'll eventually run out of power so after five or six laps and then you'll be a sitting duck but with these cars the regaining of the energy doesn't seem to be too much of a problem it's actually how much you're allowed to deploy over the course of a lap and that you kind of hit that point where actually you you like what we saw got there. Got battery charge left, but you exactly can't use Martin. It Mar yeah, exactly. Martin had energy left to use to use coming out of the um, the actual parabolica, where um, you know car head just didn't, and then of course it just it's worth almost two seconds down that straight if you've oh, got massive. no energy compared to having loads. That's how much extra boost they get. So and we're going to see. A sitting duck. We're going to see, you know, when it comes to the Le Mans 24 hours, that's going to be major, isn't it, really? Knowing when and where to use that, that energy. I mean, it's, it's major enough here at Monza, but especially on the Mosan. Oh, huge. Oh, yeah, huge. Tim Greven going off. That's the leader. He's taken over from Govan Keeney. And, did uh, that he, just as I flicked away from him as well. <laughs> he was well off, though, I think. Bounced across the gravel, no doubt lost about half a second, Sam. Yeah, yeah, uh, just seemed to get his line wrong on the entry. Uh, was straight away off line. It was an odd one, really. Looked as though he just had a bit of understeer and uh, went way off, but did pretty well just to keep the car relatively straight whilst he was off the track for a bit. Uh, like you said, he took over from uh, from uh, Go Bankini and they've got an 18 second lead over Jason Dyer who took over from uh, Janos Sturks and he's in the Ava Sim sport car and then we've got Tony Blanco who I was talking about earlier on only four seconds behind actually Tony looking pretty good up there in third uh, overall in the GTs and then we've got Nathan Parkinson who had that spin early on and that's really halted his progress because uh, he's had to fight all the way up through the field he was fastest of all the GTs on that last lap but he is a long way behind the uh, the GTE leader, over half a minute behind them. We've got a big gap to uh, Jose Antonio uh, Hermoso in the world of sim racing GTE car. But it's a little bit spread out in that mid pack in the GTEs, but at the front and at the rear, it is looking quite close. Yeah, and that's, that's what we want to see. We want to see um, that last in for the remainder of the race. There's a couple of uh, notes from race control. The uh, car 78 has received a, a warning for avoidable contact. That is the Reverend Racing Ford. Um, that was for an incident with car 44, which is the Rebellion Team 2 Ferrari. And then the incident between car 9, oh. Delta I Racing Team, and car 55 is under investigation. Blown engine as well. Nicholas in the um, Geo... Dis dis uh, Ge Geodesic racing gold car, the Ferrari, just popped its engine going down the back straight into a parabolica. Jump wow. back to the pits, race over. Any idea why that, that could happen? Really not sure. Didn't see anything. It'd be just like a. Uh, can these cars overheat? Wow. wow. Yeah, it's just. I mean, unless there was something, unless he maybe clobbered the curves a few too many times and got some damage there, or like you say, it was slowly overheating. I don't know. Very strange. Could it be? Could it be like that? Because we we've had you know you have, you get the overheating issues and things that uh, like in the Daytona 500 and things like that. Mm -hmm. And and I imagine you can. I mean, it's only 22 degrees out there on the track, so hmm, I don't know. Yeah, it's an odd one for sure. It's an odd one, but either way, <laughs> they're back to the pits and they're going to have to. That'll be 25 minutes of repairs, which is unfortunate. Yeah, he was having a good run, was uh, Caesar in the early stages, but uh, had a spin at turn one, and that really fell down the field, and of course that's uh, a whole lot worse than a spin, that blown engine, and yeah, wonder that would be his a, competitive race over. I wonder if he got a carrier bag in the engine, like Sergei Sorokin yeah. had at, uh, at Australia. A, a sandwich uh, wrapper, wasn't it? Or something? Was it a sandwich wrapper? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. 
Oh, Hugo nearly spinning at the first corner. Car nine, Delta I racing team. Yeah, he got a warning for, um, well, there's no further action, in fact, between nine and 55. 55 is geodesic racing black, Nathan Parkinson. Can you imagine if it was your sandwich wrapper, though? You wouldn't know that, though, would you? But imagine if you caused someone to retire from a race just because you, saw, just because you finished your sandwich and went, I can't find a bloody bin. Throw down the track. Well, yeah. You'd be, you'd be both like, you know, no cha -ching. yeah, like cha -ching, my bad, <laughs> and also like, oh damn. I <laughs> uh, just want to point out that Volker obviously has pitted again. His pit stop was two minutes twenty-five seconds, so he's obviously took a fair amount of repairs there. Um, he's come out. This, uh, he just came out pits last time was a one forty-one two. So let's see what he does in the next lap, and we'll see perhaps uh, if. Um, if he's uh, going to have improved or, or not, you know, like lap times that he was doing, if that repair was worth doing. So the um, thanks to uh, Falcon to a two zero eight one in the chat for saying that talking about hitting the curbs too hard can potentially blow the engine. Oh, Hugo, he spun on the main straight. What on earth's happened to him? He said, "Oh, well, oh, oh. Yeah. wow." Alex, take us through that. Yeah, I'm going to get a replay because he jumped off the circuit already. Oh, was, oh, look, this was there was a couple of incidents beforehand. The car's toast very early on. I'm not sure if I can go back far enough to see exactly what's gone on. Let me see. Just in parabolic, coming out of parabolica. That's all it is. Yeah, it went way wide, gone to the curb, and uh, really unsettled the car. And from there, he he it was over. Oh, and very lucky that two other cars didn't crash as well. In Prota de Silva and Parkinson nearly got caught up in that as well. Hugo's towed back to the pits. His race is run. Matthias I, Milano is also in. He did take court. he did take one GTE car out, and I hate to say it, but it was his impatience there that did it. He decided yeah. he didn't go around the outside of the GTE, and actually he should have just been a little bit more patient and gone to the inside. And uh, it yeah, would have literally cost him a tenth of a second or two, wouldn't it? Exactly. If he'd just gone for the he just got out of the power a little bit, yeah. And he took the GTE car that he was going with him. So, uh, I mean, he's out of the race, so he's not going to get any more penalty, but it's not going to take. Um, but who was the. Who, I don't know who the GTE car was. It's Milano um, in car I mean, 348. He's, he's still going, but look at the damage on that thing now. That so. is, that's the one. I think that's the worst one I've seen so far. Um, since the Ferrari oh, came oh, out in terms of damage. Say, apart from ours from uh, Le Mans, that was pretty pretty disastrous. Ours was, but ours, I, once Adam had finished with it, it was quite um, <laughs> interestingly put together, shall we shall we say? Dear me, I don't I don't envy that. Um, I don't know why he hasn't even tried to come in and get that repaired, you know. But I mean, it doesn't. Funny thing is, it doesn't really look too bad. He's only about three or four kilometres an hour down on the straights. So that's not really. Um, that thing should be a lot worse than what it actually is. Ah, Alejandro Ooh. Rodriguez Chavez has just been disqualified for reckless driving. Uh, you know what? I've not seen somebody get disqualified for, for that, so we're going to have to find out what it was because that might be worth it. Um, that's the nine car. Ah, he was the he was driving the nine car, was he? It wasn't no, Hugo I, that was in the nine car. It he was, just got was, in the car, didn't he? Milan, um, the driver, uh, uh, Chavez just got in the car, so he gets a disqualification, but it's the car that gets disqualified. <laughs> yeah. Poor bastard. He gets in the car, he hasn't done anything, and he gets disqualified. It's his name that's there, yeah. <laughs> and everybody sees it down at the bottom as well. Oh, what's he done? <laughs> oh dear. I'd, I'd, I'd make a complaint about that if I was him. Oh dear, that's funny. Poor guy, he hasn't having to pay for his teammates' mistakes. And now Hugo can turn around and go, well, at least I wasn't disqualified. Oh dear. <laughs> it was a bizarre incident though, wasn't it? it? It You just see a car sideways on the main straight, Sam, and you wonder what, what the heck's happened. Yeah, absolutely. Um... 
it, it, like like going back to what I said earlier on, it that that one that there's a one in one hundred chance like that will happen when you're going for that move. But once you make a few uh, in a course of a four hour race, eventually those types of maneuvers are going to cost you, and that really costs them there. So uh, I, I hope next time maybe a little bit more careful. But um, just shows difficulty of these LMP ones. So Sam oh. Prince just going on a move. Oh, oh and who's the GC spun? That's Sam Prince dire. got a move done on Riley Thompson, uh, but um, oh. very Jason unorthodox. Dyer. Jason Dyer spun. He was in uh, second place overall in uh, in GTE. A couple of battles going on out there as well. Martin Van Leeuwen are closing in on Paul Morris. This is for fifth place overall. Wow. And um, behind them as well, you've... Not bad uh, considering he started from the back, Alex. Yeah, exactly. Besna behind as well, so this is uh, almost a three-way battle now. Oh, yeah, Besna has got in. But mine through, past Morris. Going, just got going, power down the straight. Going past the Audi. Audi maybe not quite as quick on the straights as the Porsche is. Yeah, again, I think it depends on what you do as far as downforce trim and things like that. There's obviously a lot you can do with these cars that will make them go faster and slower as well and, and Sorry, I, tell I, mean, you that I, I should have said it's not uh, the acceleration maybe isn't quite as strong but I think the top speed is, sim is very similar again I, I think I've had the same sort of speed out of both of them it's you can just really trim the both cars out Im immensely but um, of course it's a bit more tricky to drive so probably um, yeah the difference there is probably in setups to be fair we I talked think... um, sorry Sam yeah, I think the uh, Audi has uh, eight megajoule uh, deployment or something, and then the Porsche has six megajoule. Not sure what that means. But Actually, Morris lost higher... another place there as yeah. well. So he's dropped all the way down to seventh on this lap. Yeah, not a good lap at all for the Ripon uh, racing Audi. Uh, but uh, I guess a higher number means slightly more power. So um, maybe the Porsche has a little bit more power usage. But maybe the Audi deploys it a little bit more, kind of concentrating on a, a little bit more power when they do deploy it. The only thing I remember was that, now don't quote me on this exactly, but Alex, didn't the Porsche have the larger petrol engine? Correct. Um, the, the combustion engine, I don't know if it's petrol or, or not, but the, um, and, and then the Audi has a, a tiny combustion engine and then more electric power that as in more uses more of the hybrid uh, i think that's what it was when we went in 2016 i believe um I, going back to that actually we've talked about this before on the broadcast but seeing these cars you know it, live in person is, is an absolute treat isn't it because they're so fast and they're so quiet oh sorry for um third place the move Samuel uh, Prince moves himself up oh, underneath yeah. the Sim Sports car. Let's see if I can get a, a full-on replay of that one because they uh, they changed positions a couple of times there. Thompson drops down to fourth. It was a good move on the brakes into the Retifilio. Really, just clean. Really, very clean from um, Sam Prince. I don't know why the uh, data, data ch the, the the sim changed away from the drivers. Right, there we go. Straightforward move, really, into um, turn one. But uh, yeah, nicely done, nonetheless. Um, it's sad to report as well that it appears. Um, leaders well, in. Sorry. Sorry. sorry, go on. Leaders in. Sorry, why you're saying that? Carry no, on. That's all right. Go on. No, it doesn't matter. That's it. He's in, he's in the box, he's stationary. Yeah. Will we have I, a driver I, swap? I don't know. <laughs> I just re he was lucky that you rescued me there because I was about to, to say something that actually was wrong. So <laughs> he actually saved me on that one. Sticks in. So he had a 12 second lead. That's now, of course, going to disappear. He's the first of the front runners to make the stop. B.O. racing car um, is now in the, the lead, Sam. Yeah, the B.O. racing car has been uh, going quite well on fuel in the first stint. I think they went two laps longer than uh, Pascal Sticks in the uh, Ava Simsport car. So 
uh, seemingly quite good fuel consumption. Uh, in the GTEs, uh, Tim Grieben is still leading, but he's lost quite a bit of time to Tony Blanco uh, over this stint. Uh, Grieben, I think, had a 1 minute 54 lap, which is about 10 seconds off the pace. Not quite sure what happened then, but uh, he did have about a 25 second lead over Blanco, down to 11 seconds, and Blanco got past Dyer. I think that was when Dyer had that spin at the uh, second chicane that we saw a few laps ago. But uh, Tony Blanco making his way up to the field, and I think there might be a challenge for the lead maybe in the next kind of half an hour or so. He doesn't look like um, he's got any additional damage, Graven, so I, um, I, don't think, I don't think he's hit anything, so I would assume a spin. Um, Blanco was a tenth of a second quicker on the previous lap, so we'll see if he can keep it up. Uh, Griven's almost that scary. And the Blanco just coming out of Lesmo. So it's plenty of time. And again, you know, Alex, as we've said all the way through, you've got plenty of time to go. Plenty of time to make up this time. Yeah, indeed. That's the thing with these endurance races. I was just looking at the gaps, actually, to see what was going on as well. And um, so Martin has moved himself back onto the lead lap completely now as well so that you know that might come around at the end of the race as well and actually the gt3 uh sorry gte gaps not too um not too large so it's gonna be uh interesting to see how that all pans out there we go finally the right data to show um let's have a look across the whole field as well so see what the am driver is doing a good job as well you know fourth and fifth overall um, still in the in the shout as well, but actually the uh, the top three all within ten seconds now. Can't complain about that if you're an AM driver. And um, Van Lusenorg just moved temporarily, at least, ahead of Ewan Meredith in the Ether Sim Sport car, which has been the pits to replace Samuel Prince in that one. The Ether Sim Sport Audi, car 99. You reckon it's worth going for a little break, Alex? Oh, uh, yeah, we could do that. Where are we? So let's we'll drop it in in the hour and a half mark, and then we'll have a little, little five minutes. Um, to visit the little boys' room after all. <laughs> yeah, I do would thinking to rest the vo rest the old voice a little bit as well. But um, yeah, it's uh, it's good. It's it's good action out there on the circuit. We hope everybody's enjoying it. The VTEC Super Series on Apex Racing TV on um, this Sunday afternoon, the eighth of April. Yeah, we've got three really good classes and. Um, Really good racing going out on the track today. Uh, instant between uh, car number one, who is Sebastian Jesch in the Sim Experience Element Sim Racing Fire car, and car number 45, who I could not see on my timing screen. Uh, 45 is. Um... I reckon right. it must be 40. Oh, it's 1 and 14. So one and fourteen. Oh, okay. Yep. They've yep. corrected that. So car fourteen is the Reverend Racing uh, LMP1 Audi, which uh, confusingly former... is not called the Reverend Racing Audi, even though it's also an Audi. But yeah, anyway, me... naming conventions aside, uh, it's them. Yeah, we don't know what happened there, but Malfeld's uh, race was at such a high to begin with, leading the race with about five second lead after a few laps. And since then, it's just got worse and worse and worse. And uh, we'll wait to see if he uh, gets a drive through. Uh, I think we've only seen one drive through so far and of course a disqualification. So um, yeah, we'll wait to see if, uh, I, I assume it was Volker's uh, fault just because, you know, he's in the faster car. But uh, yeah, we'll see if there's any penalty for either car. And it's he's going to pit snow, not quite so. I was going to say to Silva, just then leaving the pits as well, drops himself back down to second. And Luzenord, who has had two stops, um, 
I believe no, the, no. Of course, the first one will be counting from where he come from the pits, won't it? So he's yet to make his second stop. But right, right now, he's only 45 seconds behind the leader. Of course, due another due another pit stop. I am wondering um, when we're going to see Peter Smith come in again in the 19 Ava Sim Sport um, LMP2 HPD, and um, because there is about three quarters of a lap now, Sam, between he and. Miguel Garcia Sanchez in the other HPD. Now, um, he must be due a stop soon, surely? Uh, yes. I'm surprised he isn't in yet, actually, because uh, Miguel Garcia Sanchez in the Delta I Racing Team prototype car, he pitted on that uh, 46, and we are oh, now actually, on though. three. So, odd that Peter can go yeah. so far. Oh, actually, Smith pitted on lap 32, though, didn't he, for the first time? So, unless it was an unscheduled one for the eight car, so that, that actually would make more sense that that was unscheduled yeah, yeah. and Sanchez had to take over. Um, Volker oh! Melfeld has got a black flag for avoidable contact and a drive through Alex. Yeah, so Pascal Strick's massive, massive incident in the Scari. Let's take a little look at that again. Um, yeah, worth, worth looking at that, guys, just if you've got him, wind him back. Have a little look. So he got some serious air, the maybe. Lap. Yeah, maybe six, ten foot up in the air there as well. So did he hit that sausage car? He, he did hit the sausage car, but yeah, so, okay, maybe a bit of an exaggeration. Oh, on the way ten, into the corner, so, maybe about the <laughs> three <laughs> foot up in the air. But still, it was uh, some pretty decent. I just, you know, I just wanted it. You salesman, you. <laughs> I was looking. I was waiting for it, and it was oh. <laughs> Well, that was a bit disappointing. Oh boy. <laughs> now, to be fair, it wasn't disappointing he's got, at all. He's got damage now, though. <laughs> in, in fairness to him, I will give him credit. He did just decide to straight line the whole rest of Ascari because that's actually the, the smartest thing you can do in that situation. And the car, you know, cars bouncing around. Don't try and turn uh, particularly well. But if he doesn't have any damage now, I'll be amazed from Max. That is a huge. Definitely got some Just rear damage in that. Yeah. Well, he had that anyway. Oh, did he? <laughs> oh, well, there you go. He's had that since turn. He's had that since the green flag because he got absolutely walloped Pit. on the start. Yeah, he's, he's in the pits now. Yeah. yeah, but he'd already had two stops, so I'm guessing he's got some damage, like you know, meatball damage. that's asked him to come in because this like, is un this is unscheduled completely. So, just to again uh, state that. Uh, Volker Melfeld has, has been black flagged for a drive through penalty um, for avoidable contact. So, so that will have been with. Uh, Maypal's actually uh, disconnected, by the way, so not sure if he's retired or not, but there's currently no one in that car, so that might be. Uh, that team's uh, day over. So I think. Which I'm number about is that again? Which uh, 14, 14. So I think if, if I'm about to see what I'm going to see here, I think he got the, got the penalty and that was the final straw for him. Oh no, no, it wasn't. There was a car that actually crashed on the inside of Parabolica. Sorry, I missed it on the first time. Um, and that's given damage as well. So he's got damaged car again and he's got a penalty. So he didn't get. Oh, so had he already got it. a penalty before he crashed. So he didn't. I, sort of, I believe so. Yeah, it was a GTE car that was just sort of. So he didn't get the, a penalty for apex. crashing into the Ferrari. No, no, no. Uh, I was going to say because there's no way he could get out of the way of that. Must have been for something else. I might just have a little look and see if I can find it. So Luznord in for his uh, well, his second scheduled stop. Um, so now, after the issues with Strix and the issues with um, with Volker, it's um, Rodrigo da Silva who takes the lead on about Q for our break, I believe. And uh, well, just quickly as well, Denisov is um, Denisov and Bogacharev are out in the Proteus team a 95 car as well. I think that I believe that was the Ferrari that was crashed in Parabolica. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, now I don't actually know what happened, but they blew the engine as a result of that. Let's just uh, go back quickly before we go for the break. What happened? Oh, he just loses the Nikolai Bogatyev. He just loses the rear. 
and then as he's trying to uh, get it back round, gets absolutely walloped by the LMP1. And yeah, that's the, that's them done. So yeah, we're just about to go for a quick break then. But we'll be back very shortly here on Apex Racing TV as the VTEC Super Series continues.
Welcome back to the VTEC Super Series here on Apex Racing TV from the Autodroma Nazionale Monza in Italy. Andrew Woodhouse alongside Sam Fitzpatrick and Alex Simpson. And um, we have seen Sam a change for the lead in the GT class. Yeah, an issue for uh, Tim Dweeben in the GP2 Engineers car. Uh, it's apparently got a cone stuck uh, underneath this car. So uh, obviously going to hurt him down the straights. And he's probably still got another 10 minutes until he's going to come into the pit to uh, to get that removed. So uh, till then, Tim Grieven could fall down to about fourth position. I think we uh, might be getting that overtake on the screen any second now. But uh, yeah, crucially, Tony Blanco, who started this stint in third place, now up into the lead. Yeah, Alex, we uh, you, we know what it's like to get guns up in the car. We used to race Indianapolis, and uh, I believe you've got that passive move on the screen now. Yeah, exactly. Right through into... Um into the second chicane. Pretty straightforward, yeah, just got a lot more straight line speed, so made it look easy in the end. But um, yeah, good clean move. And uh, yeah, hopefully for Grieven and um, and uh, his, um, and Govan, there we go. I was thinking who his, his, his uh, driving partner was out there, but yeah, so hopefully him and Govan, they can get that sorted out on the next pit stop and it's not gonna set them back too much and they can at least try and, try and recover. Is there anything, um... Is there anything that they can do to try and... I mean, if they come in, will that get rid of it, or...? I think so. Uh, I believe so. Oh, uh, sorry. Wrong. If it goes up on the jacks, will it fall out, or what? I, I don't know. Yeah, and I think that's the thing you can do. You can have a bit of a weave around as well, can't you? <laughs> try and get it out as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you're kind of hoping and, and praying kind of thing, so... I remember that we used to... like. The, I mean, Indianapolis Turn 1 is, is oh, like, as nice. I was saying, is the, the big... The big example, and I know when we were practicing there for um, got my racing Grand Prix series, that the uh, the cones were just an absolute nightmare. If you got one stuck in the car, you could potentially have one stuck in the car for the, for the whole race. And I know that you had one stuck in for one stint of the race, did you? Oh, I'm not, yeah, I believe so. Bit of a bit of a nightmare. Our leader <laughs> in GTEs is in then, so ah uh, no, thank so, you. Probably going to see the battle in, in the pit lane then. Well, the, the battle in the pit stop round, as it were. And you know what struck me about this, uh, Sam? This Rebellion Racing Sport car, which has looked so strong in the middle of the race. Tony Blanco's consistency over these 60 laps has been absolutely metronomic because he's, he's just constant 44s for pretty much the entire race. Yeah, in his last uh, 15 laps, I think he did 14 44s and one wow. 45. And even that was a 45-1. So uh, super consistent for Tony, and uh, he's looked super good in his second stint. He struggled, or didn't struggle in the first stint. <laughs> didn't get a brilliant start as such, and uh, had to make his way through the field, but he looks like the class act up there. We Just also to had go a... back to your point, go on, I'll, go on, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it so, uh, Yeah, we had, um, we had a, a move for third position as well, Nathan Parkinson overtaking J uh, Jason Dyer. Um, that was for P3 in the GTEs overall. And uh, yeah, good drive from Parkinson, who had that spin a couple of laps in whilst running in second place. And uh, since then, he's made up a lot of time and up into P3, now up to P2, and only four seconds behind Tim Grieven. So this uh, GTE field was about 40 seconds between the top four. Now it's about 10 seconds. Guillermo Osuna has just got into the Rebellion Racing Sport Ferrari to replace Tony Blanco. Just to just go back to your point about Blanco and his lap times as well. Um, the 45s he's had, he had 45-1, uh, 45-0, then another point one, and then a 45-0 as well. Um, he had one 45-7, but apart from that, the rest have been 45-0, 45-1. And then he had one lap on lap three, which is a 43.9. Yeah, Alex, I don't incredible. know. In fact, he's had two 43.9s. Alex, I've never, ever seen consistency like that in terms of being in the same second for an entire 60 laps, barring a 10th here or there. Yeah, that's, that's pretty impressive going, I have to say. Um... Yeah, you don't. That's pretty, pretty much unheard of, especially when you, you got dealing with traffic as well. Because the thing is, is yeah. you lose time when the LMP ones and P twos come past you. You know, it's unless you just get every one of them just gets you on the straight perfect. You know, you, you 
Sometimes you have to get out of it in corners and things like that. They don't make little dives, so that is very impressive. You lose time, and um, you also can lose your concentration a bit as well. You also lose the grip of the tyres throughout the stint. But the fuel does come down, which does make you obviously faster at a track like Monza, and that's why tyres aren't always critical here, Sam, over the years we've seen. Yeah, in the GTEs, they will be changing tyres every stop because I believe uh, you change tyres simultaneously with the fuel, so it's a bit of a no-brainer. I think that's the case with the HBDs as well. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong there, but I think that's the case. LMP1s are separate. I think that's the main kind of class where we're going to see tyre strategy uh, because uh, the tyres, at least in real life, can last for a long time. In iRacing, it's not quite as long. Uh, certainly at Nürburgring, they were kind of going off a little bit after about an hour. But um, I think they're probably double stinting the tyres in the LMP1s. But like you said, pretty easy on tyres, I'm saying. And in the, the, these LMP1s, with their traction control system, which is super sophisticated, you pretty much get no wheel spin. It's impossible to get any wheel spin. Just having a look at the gaps now on the um, LMP class. So one minute, four seconds is what um, Van Luzenord is behind the leader now. Um, he's got 20 seconds to go until he catches up to uh, P4. So um, he is still lapping the fastest out there by quite a considerable margin now, at least one, one and a half seconds on everybody. Um, so you have to think that there's enough time left in this race, just over two hours for him to get back at um, Maybe even have a chance to win it. I tell you what, if he wins this race, that'll be a phenomenal drive. It depends what his teammate's going to do, what sort of lap times uh, Boris is uh, capable of. But Boris is a good driver as well. Um, another driver featured in the Pro Series. Um, had a bit of poor luck and just missed out on a World Championship license this season. But definitely got the capabilities of running very, very similar lap times to, um, to Martin out there. So those guys could be, uh, could be on it at the end. I'm surprised uh, the GTEs are still staying out there. Um, we saw uh, Gue uh, Guaymo um, Osana pit for Rebellion Racing Sport. And yeah, oh, sorry, a car just off into the gravel there. Uh, the yeah, seventh in element. Oh, Dennis in. Andlauer, that is. That's car, car one, the Sim Experience Element Sim Racing Fire car. I, he just went over the curb as well, and, and I saw a bit of vis uh, visible damage as well. So uh, over the sausage curves, he just launched it, didn't go slowly enough over it. And uh, yeah, that's a bit of damage for his car. Yeah, Keeney back into the car then after um, the stint. Let's see how he can do. Do love the sound of the, uh, of the GTE. Yeah, Roderick uh, U. Uh, Wittenberg getting into the geodesic racing black car replaces Nathan Parkinson. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what his pace is like. Uh, just wait and see where Joe Vanchini will come out. Uh, In fact, he's going to be, gonna be, gonna be just ahead, yeah. So that's just quite, ahead of uh, Asuna by, well, it'll be half a second by the time they leave Retrofilio. So that's a change for position, isn't it? So uh, that's quite important, actually, because they had lost the uh, the position, had uh, the GP2 engineers, but now they are ahead. I just wonder, can they get to the end of the race on one more st uh, one more stop of fuel? Surely it's it worth it, It would be very tight. Yeah, but surely just save a bit of fuel. Easy to save fuel around here, and surely you'll, you'll be able to um, to make up w what a... Uh, a the thing is, though, they've, they've We're in put in... 53 at this point, you know, there's still a that's that I don't think they can. They've got three minutes extra, that's like nearly two laps, isn't it? Per stint, I don't but, think yeah. you'd be yeah. able to yeah. save 10 minutes of fuel. Uh, I think it'll be a splash, it'll be a splash with about 15 minutes, 20 minutes to go. I would imagine what they could do. I mean, what do you think, Alex, is the best way to do it? Do you think full tanks and then a, a splash of fuel, or do you think like would you do two, two smaller stops? 
Um, well, if you can't make it, then yeah, maybe two smaller stops um, just to save the tyres if you wanted to like double stint the tyres as well. So then you're not putting the weight through the yeah, tyre yeah. so that, so it would last a little bit longer that way. Um, that might be an alternative strategy to do. Mm. Just having a look. Um, uh, Pete Smith, he's been in now as well and had his stop and he comes out 15 seconds ahead of the Delta Racing um, team. So... That worked quite nicely, didn't that long first stop that he did? So, yeah, I'm just just having a little look in the chat. Did Martin have? I think Martin had to start from the back because he's he's in the wrong car, is what I've heard. Apparently so. Or maybe he's changed. Maybe you're allowed to change car in the series, but maybe you have to start at the back if you do. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe the league admin could give us a little confirmation on. Exactly nice what could, happened, yeah. or if it was just a mistake on that part. So, well, we've seen. I, I did read earlier on that they, the drivers are restricted to one car, so we won't see too many more like Fords throughout this series as well. Um, it just so happens that the, the, the sort of the six venues that we're going to seems to be highly sort of geared towards the Ferrari being the the, the overall quickest in the uh, GTE. So that's where it's going to be. And for those that actually are. Um, wondering where else we're going in the series. Uh, round two is at uh, Le Mans 24 hours, um, sort of venue, so Le Mans, um, which should be fun. That's a six hour race. Then we're at the Nürburgring as well, four hours around there. That's the Grand Prix circuit. Um, I wonder why they chose the Grand Prix circuit and not like the um, the sort of WEC stroke um, blanc pan layout. I mean, it's only the one chicane that's, that's different, but yeah. Nürburgring. Yeah. Because it's a because that's a rubbish corner. <laughs> sure. That's why because it's a much better corner on the Grand Prix layout than the other. I mean, you you said you did like it. We were there, weren't we? And it, looked, it was a bit odd when we were there. Yeah, true, true. Um, Twin Ring Mategi, we've got four hours there as well, and then we are going to Road America, and we're ending the series off at Sebring as well. So, um, yeah, all venues going to be great actually. So six good circuits. Mategi is going to be tough. You know, oh, yeah. we've overtaken it hard round there at the best of times, so you can imagine what traffic's going to be like there as well. So that's going to be good. It's a rhythm circuit as well, Mateki, isn't it? Like in terms of if you if you're good every if you're good in one corner, you'll be good in all of them. If you're not, then do you know what I mean? Is it set up wise? A lot of similar corners. Throughout yeah, the very. Lap. Yeah, very similar. So. I've just put in a, a link actually for the forum post just in case anyone wants to get involved in the series I don't know the state of uh, play as far as signups goes but uh, I think we could get a few more cars out there so perhaps uh, you know if you uh, want to get involved then um, yeah, come and join the uh, come and join the series certainly look like we've got a few few spots available Stefan can uh, shout at me in the um, in the chat if that's not the case <laughs> Uh, Jason Dyer, by the way, just came out of the pits and he's just behind uh, Guaymo uh, Asuna um, in 11th and 12th overall, 2nd and 3rd in the uh, GTEs. And uh, Dyer seems pretty uh, eager to make this move right now. Difficult to say what Osa As Asuna's lap times are. He's only set one since coming out of the pits. But Dyer really closing in now, going into the Parabolica. And uh, Asuna keen to hold on to it for now, but it seems like Dyer's got quite a handy speed advantage at the moment. Well, Dyer's had uh, issues as well during this race. The spin earlier on we saw. Now he's got, he's right buried in the slipstream. What advantage is he getting? Not a great deal. Now he starts to pull some extra kilometers an hour into the Retifilio. Tries to go all the way around the outside, but it's kind of hot, kind of indeci indecisive from Dyer in that occasion because Alex he didn't he didn't break late enough to try the outside move, and he didn't break early enough for the cutback. No, perhaps just shape him up, size him up, give it a couple of laps, you know, see where uh, where the strong points are, where the weak points are, and then maybe make moves. All of a sudden, they've got some uh, some MP1 traffic they've got to deal with behind as well. Is it possible that he? Um just might have been trying to scare him off the road, maybe into a mistake. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you pile the pressure on after a little while, you know, it does make a difference. And um, sometimes the easiest way to get a move done is just to sort of pressure the guy into a mistake. 
Look at the acceleration oh. of the LMP1. <laughs> we were on board there with Jason. That thing just was like a rocket ship. <laughs> I mean, you think we are in a uh, we're in a Ferrari GTE car that we would love to drive on the road that's absolutely fast as you know what. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, we'll pin you to your seat. And that thing just took off like a missile. Like excrement off a spade. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A hot he's, one. <laughs> he's gone. I've just gone back and watched it. He, he, I mean, he's he's a speck nearly in the distance after yeah. the ten seconds. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Oh, I mean, we've it. we've seen it with our own eyes, and it is something amazing to watch when you you see these these GTE cars, you know, going round on their practice laps, and you go, yeah, these these cars are fast, they're loud, everything, and then this this missile, this silent missile. Comes, we were sat at uh, Luffield, weren't we, Alex? And the when you see the, the LMP ones power out of there and make these extremely fast, extremely expensive cars look like they're standing still, it is just unbelievable to see. Ah, it's ridiculous, it really is ridiculous. You, you don't get that in Formula One because you, you know that, that every every all the cars are fast. They're all this. They're all the same speed, basically. But. It, it, that's that's when you put it into perspective, and then if you put a Formula One car against an LMP1 car, you'd see another speed differential in the corners, which is probably similar at least, you know. I mean, but but another five seconds quicker maybe. So interesting. Oh god, it's just a day of errors for us today. I swear. Well, what's so, happened? So I shared the link, didn't I, to the um, to the series. And yeah. of course, you get a 404 hour on iRacing when you click on it. <laughs> <laughs> just go, you, you know, when you just have one of those days, I mean, literally everything. So I have, yeah. right, I have put the link in the description. If you refresh your page, you can see it. But hopefully, now you can see it in the description of it. I mean, come on, please work. It's the right one. It takes you to the forum. If that doesn't work, if someone can check that. Then I'll just, you know, I'll just give up today. <laughs> when even putting a link on the internet is a problem, oh, you know it's not good. We have got a battle on um, on circuit. This is still this um, this sort of dire um, battle. That's battle, the only one. Yeah. But there is another one starting to form up as well. That's Ruben and Victor. So seventh and eighth place in the GTE class as well just coming around Curva Grande now and um, yeah that's starting to uh, look a little bit tasty only uh, seven tenths between those right now I have to say um, that I really really do like the livery on the 18 Rebellion Racing Sport car I do think that looks very nice Alex I don't know what you think about that but yeah that is that is rather nice I just think it's nice and, and um car looks fast as well and, and Samuel Osuna got a big act to follow after Tony Blanco's uh consistent performance and he starts off with 450, 450, 450, 446, 450, 46 and 44-4. Not bad at all. A very similar pace to what Tony Blanco was doing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, losing a little bit of time to go Van Keeney. Uh, Keeney now seven and a half seconds up the road. Keeney in the Port Z3s, I think he's probably the fastest driver in the GTUs today. But oh, yeah. uh, Osuna keeping dive behind. Oh, Schultz. crash, crash, crash! In the Parabolica, Keeney almost involved, but it was Ruben Escriba and Victor Suarez Rivero. That's the Rebellion Team 2 car, and that was a that was a Karen Balaz nearly. And Keeney was involved. He did get a couple of little hits, Alex. I don't know if you can tell us what happened there. Just having a little look at it now on replay. Oh, just up the inside. Just a bit of argy-bargy going on. And then there's just a lot of cars around there, really. But someone tried to sneak up the inside. I'm not sure who that was. But yeah, that just a um, bit of contact in the rear, and then got spat around, and yeah, could have been uh, could have been a really nasty accident in in the end. Actually, just the one car really come off uh, pretty bad with it. 
Dear me, I mean, that was... Um, <laughs> that was almost an absolute disaster for Govan Keeney. It's very lucky that he didn't get absolutely wiped out there. And in fact, Sam, I don't think he took any damage. No, I don't think he got too much damage. Uh, small tap. I think he got a little bit of, uh, I think it's, uh, uh, another car's nose. Just uh, tap, hit, tap to his rear, I think. But he seems to be okay. Lost about two seconds there, but like you said, it could have been a lot worse. Did pretty well, actually. Rather than try to kind of speed through it, when he saw the incident uh, kind of evolving, he uh, was straight away on the brakes just to try to get the car stopped and that worked in his favour. So good driving from Go Bankini there and um, keeps the GP2 engineers race alive. And yeah, just uh, sorry, I thought he was going to come into the pits there. That's not part of the time. circuit though, dude. No, <laughs> you can't use that bit. Not really, anyway. Um, Alex, did it, was it him that you were saying was like Marmite earlier on? Go then, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, why is that? Ah, uh, it's something that doesn't need to be got, gotten into on the stream, I think everybody knows why, so... Oh, okay, uh, apart from yeah. me, by the sounds of it. Yeah, <laughs> so, you either love him or hate him, I think that's the, uh, oh, that's the thing, and, and, and he doesn't mind that as well, so... We're enjoying his driving, though, I have to say, his driving's... Um, phenomenally good driver. Doing well at the moment. So, yeah, phenomenally good. And I, I will say, and I've updated the... the um, team as well. I've updated the link now in the description. It did work for me! Come on! Someone click it. Let's see if it's working. I'm clicking it. <laughs> and it, yeah, it works. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, something's gone right. <laughs> Finally. Only took us just over two hours. <laughs> the link has come back to the forum. Uh, WrestleMania today as well. So um, that, that'll be good. I'm, I'm sure that'll be good. So um, you have to let us know in the chat if you're going to be watching that. Even if you think wrestling's rubbish. Well, you know, fair enough. Tell us that as well. We're only halfway through, boys. Actually, it feels like a lot of a longer race. And not because it's been bad, but it feels like a lot's happened, Sam. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have done quite a few endurance events. And often in a 24-hour or a 12-hour race you get kind of through the first hour and a half and you think how on earth are we going to keep on doing this <laughs> for the next uh <laughs> next uh you know 10 10 hours 22 hours or whatever um so i think that's just natural for an insurance race i'm sure these next couple of hours are probably going to race by us um but yeah the uh it's course funny how that. it goes on though because go on yeah, sorry yeah. no 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 carry on carry on i was going to say it's funny how it goes on because it, when we did Le Mans, we did uh, me, Alex, and Adam Bath, our colleague. We, we jumped into the Ferrari for Le Mans last year, and I was doing the... What time was your stint, Alex? Was it two? About two in the morning. Yeah. About two, right? So I was doing the double stint beforehand, and, t you know, two hour... Just over two hour stint. And I get in the car, and about ten minutes later, I feel like I need, I need, to, I need a pee. And there was no one else around. Adam had gone to bed. You were in another town, so you <laughs> you weren't even back. I was thinking, oh my god, how the hell am I going to get through two hours? And you know what? Once you start doing a few laps, and 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 you might get distracted by either doing an overtake or letting cars through, you just forget all about it. And next thing I knew, you know, you were here and, and jumping in the car two hours later. So, yeah, sometimes it goes by really quickly. Sometimes it goes by really slowly but as long as, I suppose as long as you're having fun that is the main thing um, Riley Thompson has been in the pits I believe Sam on the last lap after a 25 after a 25 lap stint which is a reasonably short stint but as we mentioned earlier on they might just be evening out the number of stops from here to the end they might just be already altering their stint lengths yeah, possibly. Uh, Riley's actually done the entire race so far. Yes. So, um, Leaders are in, sorry, into the pits. Oh, I see. And yeah, clearly. So all the MP ones are now pitting, I guess. Yeah, a part, the only one who hasn't, obviously, is Martin. He's going to be late. But I think it's going to be close here, you know. He might even take over the lead here for a second. Wow. So where Jefferson is he? Padavani. He's coming, on to, coming on to the Parabolica now. So to... He will have the lead, won't he? Um, I think. 
I for a short do. period of time. Do Tires do going on for the BO racing car. Jefferson Padovani has jumped into that one, and through goes Martin Van Lusenod into the lead. Unbelievable. Yeah, so there you go. All right. So he crossed the line 44 seconds behind the BO racing car. Um, as he, as he was coming into the pits, that's one of the quirks of Monza and the line being where it is, but he actually will take over the lead. The funny thing is, Alex, if he does come into the pits this time, he won't actually count as leading a lap. No, you're right, he won't. So 16 seconds is the gap he's got as well. So I'll tell you what, this is completely on, which is really going to see what his teammates are capable of on the lap times as well. But oh. if they can keep chipping away at this, kind of, this sort of pace, it's definitely going to be very interesting come the end of this race thing is as well he was one lap behind but he was one lap and maybe a half behind yeah yeah one, yeah, one yeah and a half yeah it wasn't just one lap he wasn't as if he started right behind the leader um he but a lap down he was he was well down so he had to catch them all he had to pass them all including the gtes he wasn't even at the back of the lmp ones he was behind all the gts as well um so yeah he caught them up past all those past the LMP2s who incidentally are are they a lap apart Alex or is that a quirk of the leaders maybe going past them is it uh let's have uh, yes yes it is completely if I bring up the so um, are they only uh, about 10 seconds apart is what it looks like on them oh no it does show that they're a lap apart even on our on our system which does show the um Sanchez uh, just pitted, though, by the way. So, a particular um, class gap. Sorry. Yeah, go on. Oh, Sanchez yeah. has just pitted, so maybe he was. Yeah. yeah so, that makes looks, sense. So, they are now. So, he is now effectively lapped until Smith comes into the pits. Yeah, that makes sense. But, of course, Smith pitted, then, oh, Smith pitted 62. Sanchez, Sanchez, Sanchez in again. Oh, tell me that's not a penalty. Oh, right, it's got a bit of, a, got a bit uh, of damage. Um, could could be. Oh, my cat's destroying. It's deciding she wants to destroy and use my um, racing rig as a scratch post. Get off! <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that's the sort. Is that the source of the technical issue? Cat <laughs> beating cables or something. Yeah. <laughs> Got feline interference. <laughs> Furry ginger interference. Oh. Wrestling is rubbish unless it's with cars. Um, I mean, fair enough. We've seen we've seen some wrestling out there on the track today. Um, we have. We've seen a few. We've seen a couple of body slams, a couple of suplexes, nearly going over the. Um, we had some aerobatic Sam going over the sausage curbs. Yeah, a few times. Drivers really uh, launching themselves over those curbs. Uh, not the best for the cars. We've seen actually quite a bit of floor damage, haven't we? For, for a couple of cars. Uh, but I have to agree with that comment. Actually, I'm not a massive uh, wrestling fan myself. Oh, no, well, uh, you know, with cars, I'm sure it'd be uh, <laughs> could be good fun. <laughs> could, be, could be interesting, couldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dynamic, exactly. Um, I will say though, we're getting launched over sausage curbs, Alex, and I do say this with tongue slightly in cheek. That's what you get for cheating. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they're there for, so you don't yeah, cheat. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, and it works around here as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's not the track. You're exceeding track limits there, aren't you? So, yep. Now, you know what? They need those on the outside of Lesmo and they need them on the outside of um, Curva della Roger as well. People wouldn't go onto the gravel for an advantage then. Just um, the race, race, we're I mean, talking about penalty points at the moment. At least every team is going to pick up a penalty point at this point. Boris Bolster into the car. <laughs> Um, in the, uh, than when they started the leader but yeah we get an indication on our overlay system now this is not accurate this is just the amount of times that they've exceeded track limits now our track limits may not be set quite to i racings but yeah um govan and his teammate in the uh, gp2 engineering car have been have exceeded limits 72 times according to our overlay oh yeah yeah so, yeah so they're I mean, going for been... it out there so uh, uh, but at this rate, they're going to score less points in second place. Yeah. All right, okay. I mean, they've done 85 laps, so... Oh, we got I mean, that's nearly for... one incident a lap. So we've got the battle for P2 currently. Uh, Osuna, uh, a bit more under pressure uh, from Dyer now, and Dyer um, closed back the gap to about by about four-tenths that on that last lap, and uh, looking for a way past. 
It's great how close they are, actually, but um, it's a, it's a tiny bit surprising, Sam, that there hasn't been more overtaking between these two. So they must be they must be just really evenly matched on pace. Yeah, I thought Di maybe was trying to save a little bit of fuel um, recently, but on that last lap, he all of a sudden kind of increased the, his aggression, but got really close. But uh, just in that first chicane, lost a, a bit of time, and the gap's back up to about eight tenths of a second. Same with fuel. Um, like, uh, I, 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 I agree with you guys what you said earlier on with the uh, maybe one stop from here not being possible. But if you can save a bit of fuel, uh, you may as well, rather than, you know, fight and lose now, it for the time. Um, there's a battle going on for the lead, and Marcus Warmworth looks like he's got ahead of the BO racing car. Could just confirm that for me alex yeah which is interesting because their pit stop was actually a little bit longer the last time one minute 17 in the pit lane compared to 111 so not sure well, quite what's gone on oh, there but it was a good last lap time for them as well 130.95 so that's as quick as we've seen the likes of um van Lusenord running out there so um, it's a 31.6 yeah. for padovani so three quarters of a second slower on that lap yeah, Padovani yeah, made an error in uh, turn one, lost the rear end just going into the second part of the uh, of uh, the chicane, and uh, that caused him to go wide and lost him about two seconds in the position to uh, Woolmer. All right, this is the VTEC Super Series here on Apex Racing TV. Andrew Woodhouse, Sam Fitzpatrick, and Alex Simpson with you. Calling all the action from the Monza circuit in Italy. We've got just under, um, just under one hour and 45 minutes left to go. So we are on the home straight. There is less of the race to go now than is behind us. And it's been a fun one, Alex, so far. We've had, um, it's been an, a fairly cleanly driven race as well, which is always nice to see because. The field, while is very healthy, isn't isn't massive. So the last thing you want is big wrecks taking out three, four, five cars at a time. Yeah, I agree. Um, it has been a good race all round. Overtaking that we've seen has been very clean, uh, very good. And yeah, uh, the start was good. We didn't have any real major issues. Normally, you know, the first couple of laps is where you see the like the big one and the pack really got on top of each other. So they sort of settled down, and you know, guys all knew that this was a four-hour race. So yeah, this is good we like to see and um, yeah I, I, by no means do we think the best of the action has gone in this race as well I think we've got a lot still to come there's still a lot of battles going on out there a lot of, um, a lot of different sort of strategies sort of playing out and people with issues and people coming back through the, uh, the pack as well so this is yeah, going to be an exciting big, close yeah the big story really in the race is that the racecraft racing LMP1 car car 24 which was in the uh, in the hands of Martin Van Luzenor now in the hands of Boris Spolstra started over a lap down they were a lap and a half down um due to a penalty and they fought their way back they're only they're less now than 40 seconds off the lead sam and we've seen solid pace from them throughout and really just reeling in the race leaders at the moment go on board with um with boris see what he do can it. do yeah do, do uh, yeah go through a lap i've realized we haven't we haven't done that yet yeah, so he's coming out of uh, Parabolica now, straight past the uh, the GTE that's just like standing still on the left there. But a uh, 130.9, so still lapping relatively quick, not quite as quick as your teammate. Has to um, get out of it going into um, the turn one, obviously, a bit of traffic. But uh, yeah, times that well, gets on the brakes a bit earlier, a bit lighter, like Sam said, just regens a bit more energy. And um, yeah, uses that extra boost coming out of there as well, pass through, down the, around the curve of Grande. No issues there. Going to have heavy, heavy breaking into uh, the second chicane. You want to pop over just a little bit on the left-hand curb, and then again on the right. Um, good line through there. And uh, yeah, you don't really get slowed down by taking some of that gravel here. Through Lesmo 1, use the uh, cam bar and get on the power nice and early. All the runoff area there, and then through uh, Lesmo 2 as well. And um, again, use all of the uh, runoff uh, area there. Down the back straight, again, deploy a load of energy here. Um, so you're getting decent sort of straight line speed before we get into a scary to break in and then we're going to swing across get as close to the sausage curbs as you can get use as much of the curb in here and flat out through a scary that looks awesome i have to say a lot of downforce in these cars and actually i feel like they've got more than the current modern f1 cars have 
And when you uh, look at it, into uh, heavy breaking again for Parabolica. Great, great corner as well. Just opens up and get on the power and get on the hybrid system and wind it up. And again, that's a lap. And uh, stings past a, uh, a, a go slow GT. <laughs> Uh, that looked very, very tidy, didn't it? And um, good lap time as well. Not as quick because of the traffic in turn one, but still a pretty, pretty reasonable lap. Yeah, he probably lost over. I, I, well, I'd say it could be nearly a second, that, couldn't it? Could have been. Yeah. From from just slowing early and and then he was he had to hesitate going around the second part of this again. But look at that, he just flies past the Ferrari like it's not even there. Unbelievable speed on these LMP1 cars. Because these that's are. That's actually a battle as well. The car in front of him, Thompson, that is for position. Am I right that these are 2016 cars, are they, Alex? These? Uh, now you've got me. Yeah, they are, 2016. Thank you. The, the, last, <laughs> the last year that uh, the Audi was uh, in the WEC, I think, and uh, so they got the same year Porsche as well. Yeah, yeah and that was a close battle out on the circuit in real life as well, so we'll see it here. Sorry, Alex. It was good. It's good that, they, that neither team really sort of worried about it too much, you know, dead dead series for them now they're not going to be back into it so why not hand over all of the details you know it's great yeah, to, because to see them it's good that we can get something out of it you know another and i know that they're in as well at least some some earlier versions of uh of these cars and like gran turismo have got some slightly older ones and some in some other sims as well but yeah you're right because uh, spolstra sam really closing in on on uh Thompson and he's flown past him just as uh, Van Luznor did earlier on uh, for position. I wonder time. if that's the difference between low and high downforce there. That's what it looks like to me. Is there it's... any reason that you would run high? You wouldn't run high downforce here, though, surely. No, but you could run high, high downforce, but low, like low wicker and things wicker like that. Like that, that out. The Audi has so many different aerodynamic changes. So, yeah, you can really trim it out on high downforce as well. And, of course, it'd be extremely fast. Oh, hello. Oh, who was that? Uh, so David Ferrari Ruiz. Spun, David Ruiz. Oh, and he nearly whacked into the wall as well. Let's get a replay of that. And the leaders came through and found a, found a crashed Ferrari. Oh, that was weird. Yeah, I had a lot of damage before, I have to say. Just looking at the replay now, that, that Ferrari looks... Uh, a lot less Ferrari and more. Oh, on the way in, just more Fiat. <laughs> <laughs> on the way in, a lot of uh, looks like a Fiat that's been crashed by a takeaway driver. So just locked, just locked yeah. up, and then he's going to come back across. He's just going to get out of the way. Is he? Oh no, he loses it again. Just hot tires. Ah, oh, you know when you just. Ah, oh, sorry, David. There's nothing worse than when you get caught doing uh, the noob, the doing noobness the... that is um, spinning straight after spinning. We've but, all done uh, it. Yeah, yeah, but there he is. I'm afraid he's done it. We have all done that. And um, he, he ended up Stam, coming back on just in front of this battle of Zuna and, and Dyer, which yeah, we've one been the, watching. One of the features of the uh, GTEs is that they can start so as you get away. You actually need to use the clutch to get the revs up initially so that it doesn't oh, start yeah. so away. So I imagine he saw quite a handy gap, thought, uh, floored the throttle, didn't go anywhere, and it turned out to be quite tight in the end. Uh, but uh, fortunately, got away with it. Um, yeah, not not a moment he's going to be happy with. But uh, I certainly know I've made quite a few of those errors in the past. Yeah, I remember. It's quite a shock to my system having to use a, a, an actual clutch in the in Le Mans when we were we were doing that. So yeah, the thing just did not move, and you just wonder why. But, uh, but yeah, there there it is. Um, it's four seconds nearly now. The lead. Sam at the front between uh, Marcus Walmuth in the Sim Experience Element Sim Racing Water car, car 702, and the 68 BO Racing car of Jefferson Padovani. Yeah, um, Walmuth, little bit faster. He's kind of maybe half a second, maybe a bit less than that. Point, but I'd, I'd probably say about three tenths of a second a lap faster. Um, but Walmuth did pit uh, on lap 73. Uh, three, whereas Padovani put it on that 83. So that could be that that, that time loss of, uh, of of fuel potentially would would be enough for Padovani to get ahead. So you know theoretically, Padovani you could say is leading this race. What I will say right now, at the current pace, 
Um, Walmouth is not going to get caught up by Sportstra. Sportstra is only lapping mid 131s, and she Walmouth for 130.6 last time. So yeah. he has found some pace from somewhere. When did he get into the car, guys? Can we have a look at that up? Because I'm guessing he wasn't in that sim experience. Yeah, he, I didn't think he was in that car from work go because he's very quick. This is he's lapping almost as quick well, as you know Martin was at the start. Although he did the first 17 laps, then he handed it over to Kai Uwe Beisner. For the middle, for, for basically 55 laps. Uh, Marcus was, was on pole as well, wasn't he? Yeah. I remember rightly, he had that mistake. He dropped down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he had that mistake. It, was, very he slow, early was he the one who had the slowdown on the first? I can't remember exactly yeah, what happened. Was it, was it a little spun moment? Yeah, it was a spam one. Or, I think. It was a spam. At the turn one chicane. Yeah, that was it. So, yeah, oh, he's yeah. Um, got himself um, back in there and, yeah, doing well. So. I bet so, when he made that mistake, he didn't story. think he was going to be in this position right now. Seems to me that like if you're in the lead, though, you don't want to win this race in the uh, P1 class. So let's hope he doesn't make any mistakes. No, we've seen all sorts of drivers um, <laughs> so far throw the race away. Um, 23 cars done that. The, the, the 9 car got disqualified. The 14 car... Um, they had a they had a crash and a penalty. So yeah, there's all sorts of. Um, it's not many left that haven't had uh, some issues out there. And a driver apparently they had as well. So just oh, did be, they? In, um, informed as well. Yeah, we forgot about that one. So it's uh, quite a topsy turvy race for for them. But yeah, still they're in the lead and doing well. Well, they had a drive. Through. Seven or two had a drive through. Mm, yeah. Oh wow. Oh, yeah, they did, didn't they? Yeah, right at the start or, or in the first kind of twenty minutes. Wow. Okay. Sportster just it, put in a 130.9 as well, so he closed up seven tenths that lap. So gap is coming it's down. It's possible, isn't it, for them? Yeah, it's cute. But I have to, I have to feel Marcus to feel has the pace. So it depends what else goes on right now. So, but what, what I will say, I definitely can see that um, that Boris and Martin they'll get themselves back into um, into at least second um, in this one. It's just what they do, which will be a hell of a drive nonetheless, because they were a lap down on the whole field. Oh, unbelievable! And like, and like we said about 20 minutes ago, they weren't just a lap down, and you know, it wasn't work, like one lap and a couple of seconds. It was one, probably one and a half laps in total. But that's the that's the pace of Martin Van Luzenord for you, managing to um, keep all that time and get all that time back. Um, I think um, at this point, guys, I think we can declare who's going to win the um, P2 class. I'm afraid it looks I think like we can. we've lost. Yeah, it looks like we've lost Delta I Racing Team Proto now. So they are gone. You can see out of the race, they've dropped way down the order now. So um, Paul Smith just circulating um, on his uh, on his own, really. Peter Smith. Peter Smith, not Paul Smith. Ah, uh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered. I was like, oh, I didn't know Paul was at this race. And then... No. Yeah. Those of you that don't know who Paul Smith is, obviously does a fair bit of uh, commentating, and he's in a lot of our series that we uh, that we broadcast. <laughs> so yeah, sorry, Peter. <laughs> He'll be sick of the sight of us. Paul, my fellow Yorkshireman, lives a few miles down the road from me. So uh, Sven um, has jumped into the AVA Sim Sports uh, number nine car as well, and that's in the pits again. Of course, that's had its issues with six and a half minutes of um, repairs required the last time so he only just about got back towards the um, the lead of the sort of the GTE class overall so he's actually mm. falling back down to 11th overall so just personal pride I think is going to keep him out there and make sure he doesn't get beaten by any um, uh, GTEs really <laughs> well at the end of the day um, it, it's still about the points isn't it? it's still about finishing the race and getting the points and We've seen so many mistakes in LMP1 today that uh, you wouldn't necessarily bet against that car getting a top five at the end of the race, Sam. Yeah, potentially. Um, certainly bad to you know, stay out there for the rest. Still got one and a half hours to go. I'm not sure what the classification rules are, whether you have to get within 10% like, uh, of the leader's laps or not. But uh, yeah, pro probably worth just uh, putting in a few more laps at least making sure that he gets classified and picks up a few points uh, because uh, for the rest of the championship it's going to be important because I think uh, despite of course this poor showing uh, a Avis Simsport 09 will be fighting for the uh, championship now I just had a quick look and seen um, 
I just want to confirm, but Govan Keeney's got a lot of damage on the front right corner of his Ferrari, which he didn't have a couple of laps ago. And I'm just going to see if I can figure out what that is. Yeah, his, his lap time's actually dropped. Oh, he's bit. crashed. He crashed coming out of Lesmo. Alex, I don't know if you can get that. It was on lap 84 for him, but that's what I was talking about. You go wide every lap and you use it as a bit of a crutch and a bit of a... Um, you know, take a bit of liberty to the track limits and sooner or later it'll bite you. We said that after five minutes of the race, didn't we? Just don't know, let's see if I can... Also really odd what happened Where about before the first... Um, coming, uh, Lesmo. Lesmo, coming out of Lesmo, sorry. Yeah, so this might be hit here. Oh yeah, big time, so... Oh, that surely has got to be suspension damage. That was too hard a hit not to have got that. But again, you know, that's what you get for doing that on nearly every lap. Yep. And, you know, how hard is it to just use the track? You know, it's, it's the same for all of the drivers out here. We've seen mistakes and whatever. And the next lap, he nearly does the same thing again. Even though he's just, he's just nearly ended his race. He goes, he, he's still on the AstroTurf and he's still nearly on the gravel. So... It's not just him that does it, they're all doing it, but uh, it's just a bit it's just a bit stupid, I think. You're in a four hour race. And then he cl and then he's clouting these um sausage curbs and even the one on the exit of Ascari Sam. It's like you just think that none of the drivers are really learning the lesson out there today. Yeah, it certainly seems that way. It seems to be decent down the straights at the moment still. Uh I think oh, he's alright in terms of how the car is. Just comparing him to uh, Rivero just behind. Rivero closing in slightly. Uh, he's yeah, a lap got a... time now, which is a 146.2. Oh, that's a bit off. That's, well, that, that's three seconds off the pace. Or, well, mm, two and a half seconds off the pace. Well, if that's representative. Asuna is coming down the, the main straight now, and he's just done a 44.4. But we know how good this team are in terms of the consistent laps in the 44s. In fact, why did we even have to look at what lap time they did? You knew it was going to be a 44. Um, yeah. But yeah, you know, that, that's... And and you can see the difference, Alex, in, the, in just one aspect. The fact that their car, after two and a half hours, is spotless. They're not clouting the curbs. They're not doing... Do you know what I mean? They're not putting themselves in situations where where th bad things can happen. Yep. Yeah. And it usually makes the difference in these long races. Yeah. You know, it really does. So, I'm sure you once told me it's all about you know racing. It's all it's all about percentages. And you know that's why and like when you go for a move and things like that that you know you've got to weigh up the likelihood of it of it working. And like Sam said, there's probably that 0 0.5 chance that you might that you might crash by say going two or three feet wide and and sam there we go after 80 odd uh, nearly 80 laps that that finally um came to pass yeah adds up and uh yeah just uh he, he, he seemed to bottom out didn't he and then go into the wall and there are quite a few drivers have been taking that line um but yeah you, you just you, you do think why don't they just you know take a little bit uh, be a little bit more careful. To be fair, compared to the first few laps, it was a little bit uh, crazy in the first few laps, wasn't it? Where they were, you know, taking chunks out of each other, you know, smacking the sausage curves every lap. But uh, since then, they have improved slightly. But yeah, like I said, just adds up over time. So I've just brought up on the little mini map just the three class cars in this sort of um, GT battle now. So. So we can keep an eye on where uh, where Govan is and the kind of gap and how they're closing him down. And um, yeah, this battle for second place that's going on. So see what kind of um, time they're doing. And of course, you can keep an eye on the lap times on the overlay as well. That'll, they'll spit across each lap. And you can see um, they're a couple of seconds quicker. Um, although I have to say the last time I was keen, 145.7 against a 144.4. So... It's only one and a half seconds, well, for 1.3. But, you know, that cap is going to come down pretty quickly now. When are they due a, a pit stop? Uh, anyone got, got an idea on that? We're looking about, what, 
50, about two hours, about two hours 45, aren't we? Something like that. So about 10 minutes yeah, time. I so maybe right. they could hold out on the lead here and just get some repairs done enough that it's not going to be two seconds a lap slower. You know? And then we no, could have a very interesting, uh, interesting race here. Oh, I think I think we've still got the best yet to come in the VTEC Super Series here at Monza today. I think we're into the meat of the race, we're into the you know the, the time when it's all about setting up some of that foundation to to get the best possible result. Yeah, absolutely. Coming because uh, the strategies now are kind of going to. Uh, Jazz again start to kind of share the same piece of track um, in literal terms rather than just uh, kind of strategically because um, yeah we're going to see how much fuel Jazz needs to take for their last stop just looking at Jason Diet uh, really close now to Osuna so uh, oh yeah is he going to make a move though or is he just fuel saving he's just fuel saving isn't he he's been doing that for the whole stint Osuna was really wide coming out of the first chicane and it looks like you're right Woody uh, he's just staying in behind, fuel saving. Because... He's not even attempting to um, to go through. And to be honest, with the lead, especially with the leaders in trouble, Alex, it's not a stupid idea at all, this. No, exactly. And then we're, we're expecting sooner into the pits as well, earlier than everybody else. 61, lap 61 was the last time he pitted. So the others were 64 and 66. Worth pointing out as well, Mark. Uh, Marcus in the overall leading P1 has uh, jumped into the pit, so he's decided now's the time to get in for him. So, um, yeah, lots going on out there at the minute. Yeah, to steal a phrase from um, Jeremy Clarkson from about 20 years ago, if you were to compare this race to a cup of cappuccino, we've now reached the point where the froth is gone. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet, milky goodness from here on in. Now, uh, you know what, I think it's only fair that we check in on our only uh, HPD, only remaining HPD runner, uh, Paul Searle, and um, see how he's going on. He's taken over from Peter Smith. Peter Smith did 92 laps. Now Paul Searle's just going to complete his first one, so... Um, well, that's really going to confuse me now that he is called Paul. <laughs> <laughs> We'll go on board with him and we'll see how he's getting on. Into the uh, Retafilio, he's going to pick his breaking point on the left-hand side just before the 100. Turns it in, takes a nice amount of the chicane, avoids a, a, the big amount of sausage curve on the exit. And then powering through this Honda engine, through the Curva Grande. And it's quite difficult to pick the breaking point for the Roger sometimes, some people use the bridge, some people use the braking marks, he turns it in, gets a big hop over the curve, but manages to wrestle control of this LMP2 car, one of the last open cockpit cars of this type. Of course, now, for those who don't know, the LMP class, the LMP2 class, uh, they're all closed cockpits as well. And so, and a bit heavier than this one. He went a little wide out of Lesmo, but not super, super wide into Ascari, don't hit the sausage curves on the inside, definitely don't hit that big one on the um, on the third part, so you will go fine, we've seen that in this very race, and now into Curva Parabolica, one of the most famous corners on the circuit, breaks at 75 metres, turns it in, gets a little bit of oversteer, but he collects the back up nicely, use all the track, and then you come over to the inside, uh, Alex for the shortest route to the start finish line. Yep, let's have a look what he does as well this time by as a 136.805, so pretty decent uh, lap time as well. Yeah, that's quite good. Um, Smith was in usually in the 37s, but his best lap he did do a 136.0. So, um, yeah, and there, he's coming up actually on this battle for for uh, second in GTE. Now, interestingly, uh, Sam, Govan Keeney has managed to um, ring some ring some pace out of that Ferrari again. Um, at least more pace than he had. Yeah, back into the 45s and actually low 45s as well. 
issue for him is it's not going to be enough, I think. Osuna he, and... He was doing 43s before, wasn't he, when he was in the car last time? Yeah, yeah, and Osuna and Dyer comfortably in the 44s every time. Also, he won't have to use as much fuel as well. That'll, that'll help them a little bit. Um, well, especially the, uh, Dyer will, stop. because he's just sitting yeah, there, exactly. isn't he? <laughs> And I think that that's the beauty of it. You know, they'll, they'll realise that there's been a problem. Either either they've seen it on their own relative, or they'll they'll be they'll have their teammate. They'll be maybe watching the broadcast and maybe listening out, looking out for these different things. As um, two comes still to lap Osuna again, but um, the the Dyer's going to know, Alex, that all he has to do really is beat the car directly in front of him, the one he sat in the slipstream on. Exactly, that's it. Although I think he's coming into the pits, is he? Yes, he is. So is he he's in? the first one to blink. So I guess ah, the car slowed down that's enough. That's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> Considering how, how long he's been sat there for. Yeah, and we were convinced he's just there fuel saving, and he's, he's actually, like I say, he was one of the latter to pit as well. He pitted so on this, 66, and he's, this, he's done 24 short. laps. Yeah, very short stint. And Osuna. Um, he took over the car on lap 61 and that's 29 laps ago so Azuna has gone further but I, I wonder if uh, Rebellion uh, Sam if they're, if they're going to just brim it all the way to the end and then just put a splash in and, and maybe Ava Sim Sport maybe they're going for um, the evenly spread stints yeah I think that might be uh, what's going on or maybe they saw the traffic still got a little bit of fuel left and decide to brim it now and not get caught up in that and also don't want to go and fight go Mankini either um, because that that'll be a, that would have been a three-way battle so yeah it's, it's interesting uh, because you, you want, the thing is if they were lower on fuel you'd think they'd want to make the move and you know try, try to uh, make an advantage try to escape yeah. yeah so if they there were there must be a thought uh, process behind it wasn't there yeah, yeah, they haven't really done what they set out to do, I guess, if they were on low fuel. So, yeah, I don't know. We, 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 um, we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> That's but, the beauty uh, of it, though, isn't it? Is yeah. um, so often we haven't got a clue until the until the last half an hour, really, how, how it's Ooh. all played out. So, yeah, uh, uh, spinning uh, Ferrari, a uh, world of sim racing junior, uh, Ruben Escobar, uh, just spun it right on the apex of the uh, second chicane and uh, nearly hit. Um, nearly hit uh, Sturks in the Averson Sport car. He's been in the car since lap 63, Ruben Escrivar. He was the one who was involved at Parabolica, if you remember, um, with uh, the crash that nearly took out Govan Keeney and his teammate Antonio Jose Catenia Amescu. As we said uh, before, He's just, trying to rub, just, just trying to rub it in that I'm absolutely useless at names, aren't you? <laughs> well, I, I thought this race was going to be perfect for you, actually. Make it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because I'm <laughs> the man at pronouncing names. <laughs> well, this one, this one will help you as well, because they've got World of Sim Racing GT. There's another uh, car as well, and that's driven by Juan Carlos Marquijano. So, Marquijano. Yeah. Um, oh. Oh, I definitely won't say that because I'll definitely get I it wrong even and, say it. Oh, and oh, offend somebody. <laughs> Spanish, uh, the Spanish team there. I bet we offend people all the time. I always say to people though, you know, that w I always make it clear on the broadcast, you know, if we're saying your name wrong, tell me. And actually, I did get a message from a driver just Oh today. no! Oh, crash! Keeney, Keeney, over! Come oh wait, out. that's a separate crash. It was another crash. What's happened to Keeney? We'll have a look at that first. We'll have a look at what happened to Keeney. Is that the was he doing the sausage curve business again? Was he? Well, I think he's already got serious damage. Something he went off just a moment ago as well, but still carrying the damage from earlier on. Right, let's see it. It was in Ascari, and he's going <sighs> to hit that inside wow. and go flying. No, uh, it's not and that one, is it? The next one? It is the next one. Bang! Yeah. Ah, oh, dear. And this is this is again lessons lessons not learned. I'm afraid. And no. he's out. Um, and, and actually, Alex, before that, I, I, sorry, after that, uh, if you want to try and get the, about the same time up on your screen again, there was a contact in the middle of Ascari as well. 
and that was between I just need to try and get the footage back myself um, that was between I think it was Elliot Roberts in the Reverend Racing Ford and you and Meredith in the Ether Simspot car is now now up in second place and those two collided in the middle of a scary Alex. Mm, I don't have that on my um yeah on my like uh it, it, if, you found, if you found the Keeney one again it's literally a few seconds after that in the corner that he's just come through and, and Elliot Roberts involved in it sorry yeah, yeah, Roberts and Meredith. Yeah, there we go. So I've jumped back. Yeah, I can see Meredith behind right now. There's a load of changes, a load of people going into the pits, so we might need to update what's going on here as well. Give a bit of a rundown in a second. Did you get it? Just having a look now. Oh. Yep, there it is. Bosh, bash. And around. Do you think you'll be all right with that? It doesn't look like it's damaged the car. No, oh, it looks okay. Um, bit, maybe a bit of side pod damage, but they both continued, didn't they? Okay. So. Yeah. And that's and the Reverend Racing Ford was that up was... to sixth in class, and the Ether Sim Sport car was up to second. But as Alex said, they're now in the pits. Um, and also in the pits uh, is... Oh, the uh, Reverend Paul Racing Audi's in the pits as well, yeah. 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 Yeah, Morris is in the pits. We've also got um, Tim Grieven as well. And then we've got, uh, who, what is that? So that's the World of Sim Racing uh, junior car as well. See how I ducked that? <laughs> 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 um, uh, it, it might be, it could be wise. <laughs> See? So the, P, the, um, the Delta iRacing P2 car is back out on circuit, I have to say. But, um, oh, well yeah. done to them. Is 24th out. place down oh, there. Oh, he's now back in the pits. Their pit stop time was 45 minutes, so this could be a retirement, is it? Could be. He, he... No, no, just oh, jacking no, it up. So, yeah, yeah. on it. Julian Ignacio Longo is in that one now, and he's only done two laps. Unless he's come in and just gone... Uh, well, I, I, that, I, that I, I think so. He's got, he's got out of the car. So they've jacked it up, but they've got out of the car. So I think that is that then. Yeah, because he's... I reckon he's gone out to drive it. He did a 1 minute 50. And then he's decided, yeah, that's not that's no good. So the Ascari um, sausage curb has been given disqualification. Reckless standing around. I agree with that too. <laughs> Get out the way. <laughs> Caused all sorts of problems this race. Oh dear, but it's true. It was, um, it, it, you know, it's been the big the big problem, and you know. But, Maybe it's just me. I'm not exactly known for my uh, carefulness on the track, but I don't know. I, 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 you just try and give the curves a bit more space, a bit more room We're all round. I think everybody needs to be doing that. Yeah, it's a tough track. You know, we've spoken about it when we've gone to places like Zolder, Sam. That, you know, same thing Same thing happens when you do... We, we did a Blanc Pan Endurance Series race there. Um, well, a uh, qualifying, World Championship qualifying race. And, you, you know, and there is time to be gained by going over the curves, but... Is it worth the risk half the time? I don't. I just don't know, really. Yeah, exactly. Keeney was um, full thoughts all over the uh, speed bump. So, it, like, he, I mean, he was. He went for. He committed to the decision at least. Yeah. Didn't he? But you when, know, when you he see didn't a, shy away from it, when you see a slide like that, sure, you just gotta, you know, even if it means standing on the brakes, <laughs> you know, just don't hit the curb. And he did, <laughs> and he got launched into the wall. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a spectacular twice, exit, it? wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you're going to do it, then if you're going to go out, you go out like that. You don't go out with the, like a pathetic spin and a 20 mile an hour crash. You don't do that. So, uh, The Reverend Racing Ford has been in the pits after the collision that it had with the LMP1 Audi. Um, Tay, uh, Tai Kim is now in that one. And did some laps earlier on, did one stint, now back in. After taking over from Elliot Roberts, whose work is probably done for the day. Um, incidentally, um, Alex, the 348 car, the C CVP3 Competition uh, Ferrari, is still going. Um, it, despite the fact that it looks like it's been just it looks like it looks like the car from Street Fighter 2 
from the bonus level, doesn't it? I'm trying to find them. See if I can bring them up. Who's driving it? Sorry, I can't. I can't uh, find them. Damage Ruiz. Ah, oh, there we really go. Yeah, that's far right. Yeah, so something uh, we'll have to uh, send out to our um, our overlay developer because I can only see the final two digits. So I see him as forty-eight, not three four eight. So uh, yeah. <laughs> Pascal, if you could uh, tweak that a little bit so we can see three three <laughs> numbers of uh, yeah three digits, that'd be great. But the point still stands. The Street Fighter Two car is is that's pretty much it, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, after it, after after yeah, the yeah. level's finished. Exactly. Just destroy. Um, Sam's probably too young for that. I don't know. I yeah, don't... unfortunately. <laughs> I think I think that's Street um... Fire. What are you on about? Super Nintendo. What was one of those? <laughs> oh, that's dear. bad enough when we have Adam on here to commentate him with us. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Oh dear. I bet I bet the pair of you only think Atari made computer games, but uh, no, they made consoles too. <laughs> hey, I had one of those. Ah, oh, there you go. I did. That was my first console. I had Atari ST console. It was a big grey keyboard looking thing. Yeah. And um, I loved that thing. I had it I had it until 2001. I had it. And uh, that was my only console at the time. So I had that for years and years. So it was, yeah, it was pretty good. I must admit, I did want a PlayStation or I did want a... Uh... uh a Nintendo, an N64 or a, a Dreamcast, I did ask for one of those, but but my Atari was, you know, that's always pretty special. And any, any time I get to play some of those old games, that's what got me into um, sim racing, actually. Grand Prix 1, Jeff Cramman's Grand Prix. Did you play that, Alex? Uh, I did play that. Yeah. It was very good as well, wasn't it, really? It was amazing for the time. Yeah. And Because you still look at the tracks on that and, and, you know, the detail that they've got on some of them considering you know there weren't many 3d games about at all it's, it's just pretty astonishing because they had they had even things like you know that dome at mexico even had stuff like that and, and the bridges at, at montreal and and you know and that and certain buildings at monaco it was just so good and In, um, i mean i just want to clarify a point here i wasn't talking about that atari i was talking about the atari 2600 the one that had a joystick with one button and you could play Space Invaders on it. That's what I I'm, still had. Well, I that's what I'm. That's what I'm talking about. I still had a. <laughs> now oh, I'm showing my which, age. No, no, I know which <laughs> one you mean. I did have a joystick with one button on it. Um, it, it the, the only way I can kind of describe it is it kind of looked like a potato at yep. the bottom of it, and with a flat bit on the top. And um, yeah, it had one button on it. And then later on, somebody got me one that had about three buttons on it, like a flight stick. Oops. So yeah, God, I, that's how I, I started doing uh, Formula One, Formula One games. Incidentally, this is a relevant point as well. The first um, in that book, uh, in the manual for that game, uh, the quick start tutorial was how to drive around Monza. Oh, there which you go. Is, which is pretty cool, and that's how I learned all the the corner names originally and. Uh, from that book, from the manual, you should sit and read the manual and look at all the. See, it had all track maps and information about the the races and stuff. And yeah, it was really really good. And you know, the Grand Prix games. I wish so. I wish they would come back. F1, you know, the Codemasters F1 games, really really good. Um, but yeah, I think you know, some competition, something like Grand Prix, Jeff Crammond, you know, if, it would be would be pretty cool again. But um, sadly, when that ship might have sailed. Sega Mega Drive on the uh, chat as their first console. Oh, Sega as well. Mega Drive, yeah, yeah, so, a decent shout. I never had one of those. Still, still far too young. But I remember there was always one. There was always, you know, a couple of kids who used to bring in, you know, their handheld Sega. I don't even know what it was called. Was it called Game Gear? Oh yeah, yeah, the Game Gear, the handheld one. The, and they were playing so, like Sonic on it, and that always oh, used to look really, really good. That, yeah, that was good. Oh, I know if there's anyone on the chat who had like Commodore 64 or the Spectrum 128K with the with the floppy disk drive. Come on, someone's um, got to be someone's got to be that old. <laughs> we had this, we had this. I think it was a Spectrum, or it might have been like a Amstrad or something. The, uh, cassettes. Oh yeah, yeah, real. That's real. That is. Uh, yeah, you're almost there. So we had, uh, we had that. We, we used to play that a little bit when. Um, 
Uh, it had stuff like blockbusters on it, and it had stuff like um, oh, I don't even. The thing is, I don't even remember the games from that one. But yeah, you had to put cassettes in. I, I can't. Uh, I mean, how does a game play off a cassette? Do you know how that happens, Alex? Wait, I, I honestly it, do not understand how that that works. When it loads it in, and tra- trans- it transmits the data like an old modem used to. You know the horrible. Do you remember the horrible noise thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, it's that one, it's yeah. the same kind of principle. It just loads it up much, much like that. So into the to memory, yeah. So. So I suppose it's just like literally how a CD it reads data off a CD. It just reads data off the tape essentially. Pre- but, pre- pretty much. And then yeah. the computer deals with. But how does it deal with like? Um, how does it know what you're doing with like the controller and stuff, or with the keyboard or whatever? It's just the computer itself that figures that out. Software engineer needed. Come on. Come yeah, on. we need something. Yeah. I don't I know. Just, I just never understood how you could do that. I, I just did not ever really sort of. Uh, how does this Sam, work? Basically, yeah. Sam sort of sat here going, "What's a cassette?" Yeah. <laughs> and sort of like, and you know, we can't fire Adam. Could we fire him instead? <laughs> <laughs> what was uh, what was funny is I was tidying up the loft the other day as well, and I found a collection of eight track tapes as well. So. Oh, yeah. oh god! <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, really old school. So. Oh man, awesome. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's just crazy how stuff uh, stuff's changed over such a small amount of time. Well, know? who buys CDs now, really, as well? You know, That's not many. A oh well, we've one. got um, a drive-through penalty for. Go on, Alex. You can tell me who that drive-through penalty is for. I can't. I don't get that information. You don't get the information. It's for know. Antonio Jose Catania Amescu. Oh, I see. I'll wait with that one too. <laughs> He's got Ooh. to drive through for avoidable what? contact. Yeah. What was that for? I don't know. It's between seven or two. Oh, did he crash with the? Um, he crashed with the uh, sim racing water. Then did he? I think I might have this. I think I might have this on replay here. Oh, he has. He's crashed with the water car. The uh, the former leaders, the pulsars. Oh yeah, just into the back of them in the braking zone. Just absolute bosh. <laughs> oh. It's not really uh, leader ones. just uh, pissed by the way. Yeah, it's boxer oh. in now. So. Right, we got what we got? Just a little over an hour. Is it worth just um, having a bit of a recap where everybody is and what's going on, just so we so we all know? Uh, sorry, the the order, yes. So um in the lead at the moment, then, is the Racecraft Racing LMP1 car. Uh, it was, and now um, it's actually just been in the pit, so it did cross the line in the lead. In fact, we'll do it when they come round. I'll do the order when they come round, and then we can get properly everything properly scored. But, um, yeah, there was, a, there was a, actually a change there in the, in the pit stops. But they have officially led some laps now, Sam. Yeah, uh, on fuel, they seem to be quite superior to everyone else. So uh, they are now 52 and a half seconds off Jefferson Padovani. Just had quite a long stop. I think that was for tyres. Won't have to change tyres till the end of the race now. So why not fetch tyres than everyone else? I imagine they're going to try and get this all the way to the end here. It's the I, only, it's they, the they only explanation. Uh, no, I think it's only about 45 minutes on tank of fuel. So what, we, what are we expecting? Two stops? For the others, and then maybe just one. So they've pitted on. Just to give you an idea, um, one and they've, nine they've the pitted on twenty, on twenty-eight, um, fifty-six, eighty-four. So it's an, it's an even, uh, it's an even twenty-eight laps every time for them. Eighty-four, and then one twelve. That's another twenty-eight. So yeah. Um, and we've got about 40 laps to go, I think. So they'll need to have about 10 laps of fuel extra, I think. Yeah. We've got, what have we done? We've done 113 laps. What's the official, what's the exact time, Alex, please? 2.58.35. 2.58.35? Ah, yeah, you know. We've got an hour and, an hour and two minutes. That, oh, it, it'll be close, Sam, it will be. Yeah, it maybe. Be, it will be very close, you know. Um, because I mean, how long, how much time does a pit stop actually, how much time does a pit stop lose you? It loses about a minute. Roughly. A minute and five seconds. 
Uh, I mean, they could go slow enough. Thirty seconds. They could go slow enough to save a couple of laps of fuel and not lose a minute of actual time, couldn't they? Yeah, I think they're going to have to save more fuel than that. I think we've got about forty more laps to go, and if they're only doing twenty-eight laps per stint, then uh, I don't think they're going to make it. I don't think that. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's forty it's laps. Gonna, though. It's, I think what it's, it's going to be is an absolute splash, though, isn't it? In the pits, yeah, yeah. it's going to be very short. So double stint the tires and everything else like that. So maybe they filled it up this time. So yeah, let's let's see how that. I mean, I still feel like the chance of the win is gone. Um, all of a sudden, the um, the top two seem to up the pace consistently, um, and are in sort of decent thirty ones now as well, even with traffic to low thirty two. So yeah, I think. Um, uh, Boris's pace is really strong even compared to what Martin was doing so it's not as if they've even slowed down it's that the leaders have just stepped it up a bit yeah it's because Boris has driven driven beautifully since he's got into the car yeah so Sturks is still going in, and he's now um, being scored as the leader in GTE car 79 that he's sharing with Jason Dyer now, Sturge was a bit quicker than Dyer, uh, Sam, uh, by maybe maybe a couple of tenths. Maybe that's it. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd say so. I, I'd agree a little bit. Um, just dipping into the 43s at the moment, that's like a really good time, but 44s are very solid. Asuna just doesn't quite seem to have the pace. They, they must have changed positions, I think, in the last pit stop about 10 laps ago. Uh, and since then, Sturks has just pulled away. Made a little bit of an error, an error at the start of this lap. But it's about nine seconds between the two of them. Nathan Parkinson still there. Oh, off. About... Ferrari off. That's um, Ruiz. Sorry, um, Sam. Oh, uh, yeah, that's uh, fine. Uh, Parkinson about 10 seconds behind Osuna uh, in third position. Uh, so it, it's difficult to see that top three in the GTEs changing from now to the end. And there's now only 10 seconds between car 99, Ether Simsport, and Ewan Meredith and Boris Bolstra in the 24 Racecraft Racing car. So podium, Alex, is, is definitely a possibility for them. Um, lapping just one tenth of a second quicker that last time round. Yeah, I just, sorry, I just, uh, call, what's caught my attention um, was the fact that we've had a driver change for Sim Experience Elements Sim Racing Water. <laughs> and uh, yeah. yeah, so um, they had Based got them. They, yeah, really. they had got themselves sort of back into second, and were they were sort of kicking around the lead a bit. But that last didn't just not particularly great. So they lost a little bit of ground. So Jefferson really um, opened up quite a, a margin now for the very um, racing uh, team. I wonder if they picked up. Um... Because they had a, they had a little they had an incident, didn't they? They had a little um, contact, didn't they? And it looks like Sam, if I'm looking at the lap times correctly, that oh. that might have been what set Le them off on the path of going 32. Sorry, Alex. So yeah, leader just missed the uh, the first chicane completely and utterly altogether. He's oh, got, he's got a cone stuck. He's under got the a cone car. stuck. Yeah. So that could be uh, that could be a problem. Should be pitting quite soon, however. Pitted on lap. If he can, if he can hit the curb hard enough, he's it might come out. Oh, oh! It nearly came out. It almost wiggled. Oh, it's gone. Uh, it's disappeared. I hate that. <laughs> uh, well, it's good. Uh, he won't. He won't hate that. Yeah, this is true. This is he'll true. Like, he'll like. He'll He'll love that. In fact. Damn, I'm racing, calling us liars again. He's like, they're like, no, nope, no, go there. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see. I, I was. Just, um, I know it was taking a while for me to get to my buddy point about the other one, about the um, uh, da, 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 da. who was I? Who was I on about now? The water car. But yeah, Sam, I'm sure there was a little contact, and since then, Walmouth was about one second slower than he had been going. Yep, yeah, that could well be the cause of it. Uh, just looking at uh, that car, the uh, water car with Fastener. I think they've got the same amount of stops to go as Spolstra. I think they've both got one more stint to go. Uh, oh, sorry, one more stop to go. Because he was the one Spolstra. who hit. Sorry, just, just looking at it. He was the one who um, was on the receiving end of um, 
the, the world of sim racing junior car that's what they got their drive through penalty for was hitting the water car yeah it was wasn't it yeah yeah and ever I, since I, I then it seems like either. the water car's got some damage but it doesn't look like there's any damage so unless it's underneath and actually the funny thing is he's just gone past him again yeah um Walmart, yeah he was losing at the start of the stint he was in the 30s 31s at the end he he was never going into the 30s most of the laps in the 32 so i think you might be onto something there i think um yeah I, I think maybe the damage maybe it was just a bit of a uh, floor damage like we've seen earlier today um they're saying on the, the chat that uh, ruiz um in car 348 did hit the inside wall coming out of lesmo one um i'm not surprised with the way that this car is it looks though but it doesn't handle altogether too well um, and that was, uh, for those who were just joining us, um, Alex, that car was obliterated in the crash with the nine uh, Delta I racing team car that got uh, disqualified. Yeah, it was, absolutely, wasn't it? I'm surprised it's even still going out there as well. So it got hit hard down that it main street. It doesn't look that slow out there either. I mean, he's doing, I mean, he's not setting the world on fire with his lap times, but he's in the 45s and 46s out there, which isn't, for a car that looks like that, it's not that shabby really, is it? No, not at all. No, it's good. He's driving pretty well. Just having a look, at, look as well. So, who's our leading AM driver? It looks like the world of sim racing GTE, our current fourth in class. So, yeah, 51 car. Uh, 151 car, sorry. Just let me know who's driving that one, Alex. Just for <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Juan Carlos. <laughs> okay, there we go. That works. That works. <laughs> Sorry, I did that. I, you could probably tell I did that on purpose. Oh, you must have known he was just uh, on screen as well. He's like, I heard my name! He did a crash, didn't he? <laughs> then? As he was going through there. There's a big, he had a big lockup, didn't he? Just ahead of Nathan Parkinson. He's probably had enough of turn one, to be honest. Oh, he locked the rears, Sam. Did uh, Juan Carlos? Yeah, I just saw the uh, him, him sideways there. It was quite a nice drift, actually. Um... <laughs> Yeah, did well to hang on to it. Uh, and yeah, didn't really lose any time there. He's only got two seconds from the next AM driver as well, behind him as well. So that's uh, Dennis just behind in the number one car for um, the Racing House Online. So the, um, the AM lead is very much up for grabs. And of course, the AM drivers do get scored separately to the pro drivers. So even though we've been showing like a joint category, Every now and again, I keep showing up this the 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 you know the yellow class, which is the AM. So, but yeah, so really, this is um, this is our sort of net AM leader, and he's just got the same yeah. points as the uh, the overall GT. But the um, Racing House Online team, I'll give them a little bit of a uh, bit of airtime since I think they're one of the few cars that haven't really had a lot of it so far. Um, they're comprised of uh, two Spaniards, uh, Noé Avis Jimenez, and. Um, Juan Romero and uh, sorry I've done that wrong No way Avis Jimenez is uh, Spanish and then Alvaro Rabanal of Italy there we I go. must have got that completely wrong as well I do apologise because uh, <laughs> it's, it's um, what's happened uh, there sorry it's Kim who's in the next so it's, it's second for Am. sorry yeah, yeah sorry i got that i read Reverend that racing ford yes. yeah i can read that completely wrong on the overlay so i do apologize yeah so it's uh yeah ty kim who's actually second in the am class and there is actually a bit of a margin between those two kim's going along like fairly decently the lap times aren't setting the world on fire but well 45 4 is not it's not great but it's not bad um i tell you it's going quite well out there actually is um, Dennis Andlauer in the uh, Sim Experience Element Sim Racing fire car. And Sam, we saw difficulties for them earlier on. Um, during, just after we came back from the, uh, from the commercial break, we, um, he was off in the gravel. Yeah, he's had a couple of issues, I think, as uh, Dennis, but uh, yeah, looking good right now, comfortably uh, closing in on one car loss i'm not going to attempt good to lap time though 44 yeah 44 5 good lap time yeah yeah um, this is about of a position isn't it yeah um because i think dennis's pro 
whereas Juan Carlos says, um, oh, it here goes. Oh, he goes. To the outside now. Can he go all the way around the outside? Shay's just going to get cut back. No, he's going to go all the way around the outside. Going to be a lot of marbles out there now. But he's going to have the better run coming out of here. And he should. Oh, he should. But is he going get to? The run <laughs> down into turn one. No, they're side by side still. Clearly, not much of a difference in terms of drag. Just pulling ahead. We'll see if maybe there's any resistance put up by Juan Carlos. No, he breaks early and I just wonder lets if Dennis have it. I wonder if that's down to the fact um, from Juan Carlos again. It looks like he's struggling with his braking. I wonder if that um, tiny bit of front left damage, Sam, is maybe what was uh, making him suffer down the straight a little bit. Yeah, possibly. But also the uh, run out of the power bulker. If you just run on the outside, sure, um, Dennis was a little bit earlier on the power and that would have just helped him all the way down the straight. Oh, so yeah. Could have been a combination. And yeah, like I said, the damage will be uh, costing them. It kind of uh, fires you out, doesn't it? That long run on the power bulker. Yeah, it yeah. kind of fires you onto the straight. Um, you don't really understand why it's so much faster out there because, yeah, it's so much longer, so much a longer route. But. Like you say, you can get the power down a bit earlier. Carry that momentum. Uh, Spolstra is going to get past Merida any second now. Uh, he's about two seconds a lap faster, and he's 1.3 seconds behind. So I think uh, at the end of the next lap, he'll be he'll be passed. We're going to have that um, slightly rare thing, Alex, for this race, which we're not seeing a, a massive amount of, and that's going to be Porsche versus Audi. Yeah, well, yeah, we haven't really picked up on that at all. So, and that's kind of how they um, they sort of touted this uh, return of the two cars, wasn't it? So, oh yeah, it's good. It's, it's going to be good, and and you can see as well, looking at the two cars, just how different the approach is. The Audi's got all that, those suspension elements. You can see them, and uh, you know, a bit F1 car style suspension almost. And I mean, as in in terms of the aero parts of it, and then the Porsche's more of a traditional traditional looking LMP um, you've got a rounded roof on the Porsche you've got a bit of a flat one on the Audi um, which one do you like best Alex in terms of the way that they look and the way that they drive even it's that, you know that's a really tough question I mean I love the Audi ever since seeing it at Silverstone um, that thing is like whisper quiet and so oh. freaking fast as well it comes up on you it's like death machine you know you wouldn't want to be crossing the road you're this little whistling oh, God, thing, you just, just, you know, splat. You wouldn't you hear see, it, would you? You don't see it coming, you don't hear it coming. Um, but it comes past you at a rate of knots, I love that. And I do quite like the way it looks as well, it just looks a bit mean. Um, but having drove both of them, I, I'm starting to fall in love with Porsche in the service, I have to say. Um, it's just something yeah. about it, it just feels really, really nice. Um, and our, our Apertris and UK livery looks absolutely awesome in it as well, Sergio. You know right. what, it looks great on the Audi, but I think it looks even better on the Porsche. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. So, and yeah, here comes so. Spolstra with a head of steam and some ERS. One second quick on that lap as well. That is just about that. And that's the 11 car that's a lap down now. Total downforce racing with uh, Hayden Pastorius. I mean, unless there's a there's, unless Canada? there's a change in the strategy, I'm just I'm just going to bring them up where they are on track to each other now, first and second in the P1 class. But I can guarantee, looking at this, you know, you know, oh, what's going on? Uh, what are we? 68. Oh, let's let's do that. Hold on, 68. There we go. So they're half a lap near enough between each other at the moment. So it's going to have to be a completely different strategy. One less pit stop for Boris to get to the lead of this race. I've always it's, just amazing. it's still an amazing effort to get back to second place. There's definitely no doubt about that. But yeah, pulling off the win now, Sam, it looks unlikely for the Racecraft Racing team, but it puts BO Racing in a good, um, in a good, in a really, really good position with 40 seconds in front. Yeah, I, I, I think Racecraft Racing can still do it. I think um, because their last pit stop should be quite a bit shorter, uh, probably about 10 seconds shorter, because they're going to have to take less fuel. They've also got newer tyres till the end of the race, and most laps they're second and a half a lap faster. And we've got, it's what, 45 minutes, 
Uh, probably 30 laps to go, maybe just a little bit under. Fastest lap of the race there as well, yeah, 129.980. So um, if they can pull oh, wow. First one, one under the one minute lap, 30. They can do it, I think. First driver in the whole race then, to dip under 90 seconds. And actually, you know what, I have to say, um, that is only... Uh, Oh, it's less than a tenth of a second, Alex, off of their qualifying time. Yeah, impressive. I don't know who qualified the car. I think, uh, not, yeah, I'm not sure actually myself. But that is impressive regardless. Uh, the, the pole position time, incidentally, uh, they only qualified in sixth place, uh, but the pole position time was by the, the water car, the 702 Sim Experience Elements Sim Racing car. 128.955. So that was impressive, dipping under the 29 mark. And um, now in the race under 1 minute 30. And the slipstream definitely won't have hurt Alex either on that lap. No, <laughs> no, every little bit I think they're helping. <laughs> now that's the only thing I haven't really experienced yet. I don't know if any of the drivers on the chat have, you know, what kind of draft do you get on these, um, on these cars? Is it substantial or is it just fair, relatively minor? No. Um, looking at that lap time, I'd have said it would have been, would have been worth something. What's he done as he crosses the line this time? A 130.5, so still another good lap. Yeah, I mean, that's not shabby, is it? You'd take that if you're on board the Porsche. 1.2 seconds quicker that lap. It was 2.2 the, the previous lap, but 1.2 this time. Okay. You're right, that's coming down pretty, uh, pretty rapidly. So 37 seconds is the gap. So, and you, Sam, if you reckon what, maybe 10, 15 seconds they're going to gain in the pits as well? Yeah, no, so the pits need... is about 35 seconds, I think, in these cars. So, yeah, should be quite a bit shorter for uh, for the race car, racing car. So they're going to need 20 seconds. So they're going to need that one or two seconds a lap. Well, one and a half minimum, I think, just to try and bring this into some sort of contention for when they, when they pit. So, yeah, this is going to be interesting. Let's just compare the times between Jefferson Padovani and Rodrigo Improta da Silva. And Rodrigo was doing sort of 31s and 32s. Like mid 31s was probably a, a, a reasonable lap in the first stint. Padovani is going quicker. So he, he did his, incidentally, uh, Sam, he did his fastest lap on lap 107. That was a 30.014, so not far off at all the time that we saw from the 24. Yeah, yeah, really quick time. Because there are Ferraris battling in front of him. Yeah. And uh, Peter Bryan, last nope. minute racing. They're not battling, but they are uh, making it difficult for each other, it looked like. Yeah, just a little bit awkward there. Every tenth counts now, I think, now that we're in, at the end of the race. 1.3 seconds faster on that, that was false. Should that's about what he needs maybe a little bit more like what Alex was saying about one and a half seconds a lap um, so it, it's completely flat out from now on it's uh, qualifying laps all the way uh, Meredith by the way is five seconds behind Spolstra got decent pace but uh, probably isn't going to challenge yeah um, what do you reckon Alex? should we go for a, a five minute break again a couple of minute break yep let's do that let's head away and we'll get uh, this one out of the way and then we'll have the last half an hour uninterrupted
Welcome back to Apex Racing TV and the first round of the VTEC Super Series. We're at Monza, Andrew Woodhouse, Alex Simpson and Sam Fitzpatrick for the closing half hour here. There's been some pit stops while we've been away. There's a potential change uh, for second place in class in the P1 class as well. So we will uh, hand it over to Sam who will give us a bit of a lowdown on what's going on while we've been away. Yeah, so uh, Jefferson Padovani in the BO racing car who were leading by about half a minute, they just pitted. Uh, came out just ahead of uh, KU Bassana in the Sim Experience Element Sim Racing Water Car and uh, uh, Bassana actually got past Padovani. Padovani struggling a little bit for pace early on in this final stint uh, and uh, Benis Bolster still out in the lead currently has, hasn't pitted yet, has got one more pit stop to make and uh, the real battle is now if Spolstra will make his pit stop and come out ahead of Padovani, that's the big question. Um, really to decide this LMP1 victory. Uh, you say that, Padovani, I mean, they're all on five pit count at the moment, so five times, but of course we know Boris has to make the one more, at least to get level with them, to start from the pits. 42 seconds ahead, we're looking at about 55 to sort of one minute sort of time loss. So it's quite, quite interesting, but of course, I don't think it's just going to be Padovani now. I think, you know, um, Basna is absolutely in this fight. They're only half a second apart right now. And it's all about where Sportster is going to come out after the uh, pit stop. If this is just a splash of fuel, um, and he can keep it sort of in and around that sort of 55 seconds, then it's going to be quite close. He's going to have 10 seconds to try and close up in the final sort of half hour of this race. But uh, if it's like a 1 minute 16 stop again, then it's gonna, he's going to be too far back and it's going to be these two that are going to fight it out for the lead of this um, win of this race. Yeah, I think uh, Bassan uh, uh, still got one more pit stop to make. Uh, he pitted with oh, about that an one hour to go. Yeah, you're right, sorry. Um, so he's got oh. to make another pit stop. I was just play. hoping. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, the, uh, interestingly, Padovine took tyres at that last pit stop, which is really odd because you would think, you know, half an hour to go, no point in taking any tyres, but he did take some tyres, and uh, that might just be enough for Spolstra to make up the gap. We know Spolstra took tyres just uh, about 45 minutes ago, so he won't need tyres, uh, and that might just be enough to uh, to overcome that gap. Boris, that's could, flying. It could be enough for Padovani, though, to, to make the difference out there. You never, you yeah, never know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just, just quickly, flying. sorry. Go last on. lap he was as well. 29, 29.75. Uh, yeah, so absolutely flying out there now. Um, sorry to interrupt. I, I was just going to butt in at some point, uh, <laughs> just in case. But um, yeah, sorry about that, chaps. But um, I, I think pa Padovani's been quick since he jumped in that car. He's, just, he's been a little inconsistent looking at his lap times. I think that might be the the problem, I mean, even since he's come out of the pits, he's done 31-5, 32-4, 33-0, and 31-3, so just needs to concentrate on the on hitting the marks and, you know, doing what got this team into contention in the first place, which is a decent, consistent lap times. So Baz Bezner, um 30.5 on that lap, so really put the hammer down when he was clear. It'd be interesting to see some if. Uh... Oh, goes the leader. No, just not it, not patient enough for the leader. Boris, he needed to wait. That was that was. Oh, I'm afraid he's going to be called a typical LMP driver right there. So, just didn't need to. I know he needs to bang the lap times in there, but that kind of little. This is what you were saying about Andrew earlier on. You know, these yeah. these extra tents that you try and squeeze out sometimes cost you so dearly. And let's see what that's uh, that's going to cost. Probably 10 seconds at least. Um, and some damage. And, and maybe more than 10 seconds. And maybe the damage, yeah. So um, he might have got away without any damage. That's what it appears anyway, because it was a very slight nudge uh, in the end. But yeah, he just, he, he just lost the rear, didn't he? And... How costly could that be? I mean, that's pretty much cooked that goose now, hasn't it? Um, if there was a goose indeed in the first place. Yeah, I think you might be right. 37 seconds now. So, And um, the, there's an incident between 7.02 and 11 that's going to be under investigation. So the water car and total downforce racing look like they've hit each other. 
the water car has been involved in a quite lot. a lot to say it's <laughs> quite clean out there at the minute. It looks quite, you know, quite pristine. But yeah, it's been hit by the uh, 121. Uh, the 11 it's had an incident with. And it, it crashed with the 23 um, at the beginning of the race. Yeah, Palovani, by the way, just had a half spin down at the second uh, chicane. So that's oh. the same theme we've seen throughout, how no one really wants to win this LMP1 field. And Palovani lost about three seconds. Oh, there's a spit. Wow, my God. Right in front of him, a parabola. <laughs> as well avoided. In that's front of the... moment. Uh, Peter Bryan, last minute racing. What, in front of who, though, was it? Um, uh, in front of the Padovani. Padovani, Padovani oh. well, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, well, he would have come round to the corner and uh, I don't know if you can get an on-board, maybe, Alex, with Padovani and see what he sees when he comes round the corner. Oh! <laughs> oh, dear me. Yeah, if you can see that, you definitely see that he reacted very well. There's been a little change as well in the... Um, GTE class but we've got a lot of uh, the AM class specifically but we've got a lot of pit stops going on right now as well so we'll have to wait until that pans out yeah, the, to see exactly uh, the Reverend who... Racing Ford's just come in yeah and I think they're still got the lead though haven't they I think yeah in they AM, have in AM is it yeah they have in AM absolutely oh he's um, nearly lost it coming out of turn one Jose, Jose Antonio is um is second so did we have I'm trying to think if, we've, if there's been some sort of mistakes or something i haven't seen I don't so we've so. got so, yeah it's just strategy there just to make it easier for you alex with, with you know paul and peter and all this lot yeah there's jose antonio um in world of sim racing gte and in world oh. of sim racing junior you've got antonio jose oh well there you go <laughs> it's like him uh, from the lead spins again, <laughs> so oh. uh, so that's not gone well on the on the outlap. No, not at all. Uh, let's show the um, show the gaps as well because. Uh... Oh, oh and one again. more time, and into the wall, big time. So, when oh, the no, tires are hot, when you spin, you need to go easy. This is going to hand the race win over here. It so could do. It, he's still well he's done. still got four second advantage, but that's two massive mistakes. He you know, had he's got a fourteen fresh car. second advantage nearly when he came out of the pits, and he only came out of the pits some three quarters of a lap ago. Yeah, quite incredible. You, when when you make the first day, you just gotta make sure that you, like Alex said, cool down the tires, don't make another error, and uh, I can't see Kim holding on. That kind oh, of and oh no! Oh my goodness! And again, there, there's oh dear, there is this thing called modulating the throttle. I think it needs to be done here. Slam those brake bias forward as well because it seems to be under braking <laughs> and everything. Oh, that old chestnut! Oh, yeah. here he goes again. So I love I'm that. On, I'm on a joke. <laughs> But yeah, you could just see under braking there, he got off of them and, um, you know, the, the back just cut, cut loose. So oh! It needs, you, the, when you when you have one incident with the, with the current tyre model, it takes a lap and a half to get the uh, tyres back into a reasonable temp. I remember you, you were do saying it again, in, in Talagos, you actually worse. cooked your tyres, didn't you? After oh, me me one them. spin, that was it. I had one spin and they never come back to me uh, in Talagos. So. This is about four spins that Kim's had. Well, four, well, two half spins and one proper one, or two proper ones, is it? Yeah, yeah. And there, there is look in the background. There is Jose Antonio Homozo, and he looks like he's um, going along, you know, rather nicely in the low one minute forty fives. He'll see that Angry Birds pig getting closer and closer, Alex. Too. Yes, he will. <laughs> Car 11, Total Downforce Racing. They seem to have been in the wars today. Um, they've just re received a, a warning from Stefan Slasher, the, the race director, and uh, ignoring blue flags. So it gets better for the 11 car, doesn't it? That was against the uh, 702 car of uh, Bassner, I think. Uh, 
Bolstra's in. Where's he going to come out? I think we need to look at this. That yeah, yeah. GT3, gonna be? GT battle, sorry, can, uh, can, can wait. <laughs> oh, yeah. Might have it. Well, that know. battle will come in the next few laps, I think. Padovani now coming around the parabolica. Oh, this yeah, the water, the water car is through. Basner is Padovani's through. Padovani's going to have it. Well, Basner's through 10 seconds clear. But Basner still needs another stop. It's true. Where these guys now are, 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 are clear to the end. That spin. That was a lot closer than you think, though. Uh, 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 with that spin, he would have would have had net lead, wouldn't he? So that pit stop was 49.33. So you know how quick that was. So he won't be on fresh tyres now. And of course, uh, Padovani is. So it's, this is going to level it off a little bit. And we've got a 6.9 second gap. Uh, sorry, no, we don't. We have a three-second gap between those two. It's uh, six seconds to the leader. So, yeah. Ah, oh, the race is on. And like you said, uh, well, no, well, not you didn't say it. Like, take that said. Have a little patience. <laughs> and and that's all he needed to do was just have that little bit of patience, Boris Bolster. Driven such a fantastic stint. And just that little bit of eagerness, over-eagerness, as, um, as put him from what would have been... Well, it could still be a sensational win, but from what would be the lead to second place. Just comes back to our point. Nobody in this class seems to want to win it right now. <laughs> and, you know, again, never have I felt so smug in the, the first five minutes I was on about consistency, and there it is. You know, it's, it, it, it really has um, come down to that, Sam, and that for everybody that you, you're seeing, like I say, that striving for the tenths and they're losing the seconds yeah absolutely um e each of these teams could have won this race by oh! an ease oh what's that padavani just going no it was basler he hey into i don't know the car just seemed to nearly snap on him as he turned into turn one yeah i think he may have maybe locked up the rear oh pitch, yeah the sure, rears but... were the rears was crying on that one yeah so he's got to be careful now Sam, that he doesn't overdrive the car in the next few corners, like what Ty Kim did, in order to just bring those temperatures down. And you see, um, Alex, I don't know if you can, if you are watching uh, Bazin now, but he's driving Lesmo very smoothly and very sort of carefully, just to bring that back down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I uh, just flipped away for a second, but we will um, we'll go back onto him. <laughs> Yeah, the change of direction in these things is really, really impressive. And and what's also impressive is, because I know they're built in a similar way to what an F1 car is, but just how still they are through the corners. You know, there's very there's, there's hardly any roll at all. Yeah, they are extremely kind of stiff. I, I always find it kind of weird because they're so kind of upright and uh, yes. quite quite tall, and yet they just go through the corners ever so quick it, it almost looks like they're going to like turn on their side at some point i mean you see they... it's like a, a it, when we, we were stood about 10 feet away from them at silverstone we were stood at the entry to, to maggots and beckett's and you know when you see them go through there it just defies belief because it just like like, like you said it just you, you feel like they're going to have some kind of pitch on them and they just don't so lap time check then, 131.85 for uh, Padovani and uh, 132.6 for Sportstra. So uh, lost, um, yeah, eight tenths of a second. That lap could have been a bit of traffic, um, but also it could be the difference Ooh. in the fact that um, Jefferson has the fresh tyres out there now. Just for some reference as well, Baysner, we know he's got to stop again, but 130.5. He's giving. He's he's doing all he can to to give them a sniff. It, it it's unlikely to be enough, but he, he's he's really trying hard out there, and he's done. And the last you know, last few laps have been very quick indeed. Been up there with some of the fastest laps of the race for this team. It was only yeah. two one hundredths of a second slower than the fastest lap for them, which was set by Marcus Walmuth. Just yeah, they've had in. great pace throughout. Uh, so I was just quickly checking in to see what was going on in the AM class as well. Water car um, in. 
Alex. Uh, just uh, okay, we'll as keep well. going on that as well. They're going to obviously be we're a long way behind. Yeah, 2.8 seconds is the gap, so it's still coming down ever so slowly, but Kim has kind of sort of uh, settled into a rhythm now and got the car underneath him and the tyres are, are, are not, uh, not cooking. You but, know what the uh, worst part is for Kim, though? He's overheating the tyres when they're, they, they're probably the coolest. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that, that takes away all that benefit. But the lap times, as you said, you know, that was a 145.1 that time, so that was a lot better. Um, yeah, hell of a lot better than, than the first few laps. Water car emerges then. Um, as far as I can tell, they're 30 seconds behind P2 now. So With about, what, 15, 10 or 15 laps to go? 12? Yeah, that's probably, yeah, around about that, I would say. So just so over 15, just over 15 minutes at this point. So. so they're almost certainly not going to get there. Although, if they start battling, it's possible. But on this circuit, you don't feel that battling's going to slow anybody up because you just wait for the right time, you push the ERS, and there you go, you're through. Yep, yeah, exactly. It's not like DRS, where you even have to wait for that. You can just do it whenever you want. Yeah. <laughs> Providing, uh, the, obviously, you have caught up to them in the first place. In the uh, GTE Pro, uh, Tony Blanco recently pitted, I think about five laps ago, was leading back down to P3 now behind Janos Sturt and Nathan Parkinson. And uh, Blanco has made an extra pit stop compared to those two drivers. So I think those two drivers managed to do like a, a three stop, so pitted on the hour every time, whereas Blanco's had to hit, make one more pit stop. And that's been the difference between the race victory for uh, for Rebellion Racing Sport, I think, unless the top two have to pit again. But yeah, that extra pit stop has really cost that team. What do the Ava Simsport team have left? Because they only pitted on lap 100 and 117, so they'll be going to the end. Yeah, yeah. So they're in the in the uh, yeah. Apparently they've made five stops. Blanco's made six. So just one, one extra stop, and that's cost Blanco. Yeah, yeah. Sturch then, um, who did did begin the race, and Jason Dyer, who and maybe this is where that fuel saving stint from Dyer actually made you know, has made some difference because it's definitely helped them along the way. The geodesic racing black car is currently in second place. Um just in fact a lap ahead of Dennis Andlauer now and that's Nathan Parkinson who, who we, we saw was facing the wrong way after about 10 minutes right leaders coming across the line we're going to have a look at what the lap times are again and it's a 31-2 versus a 31-8 so Baltstra is losing time right now. This That mistake is looking even more costly every oh. lap we go now. He would have he would have had to have held on to the lead, I feel. That's what he would have done. Where now, um, yeah, he needs to try and catch up. And he just hasn't got the tyre life to do it at this particular point in the race. Um, how, yeah. how one moment can undo four hours worth of work? Yeah, yeah because is, they um, really pushed hard, you know. They deserved oh, yeah. it. I mean, not that a second isn't going to be an absolute phenomenal result. Because um, it is. But, yeah, absolutely. But the, because the, if, the if win looked, was in their hands, you know? Because if you looked at the, the LMP1 class, Alex, after, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, there were only about, I think, there were 20 seconds, I think, between the top six or seven teams. So if when, when we looked at those standings there, it was like, well, he might get on the lead. Yeah. He might... You know, get a top five. Suddenly, you know, but to, going from that to being disappointed to not win the race is it's a, still a fantastic effort. I think there um, has been a change in the um, um, in the GTE class as well. A very, very poor lap for Ty Kim. Um, he went off. Let's see if I can get you that replay now. And that is her Mosel then into the lead of GTN. Whereabouts was this? Oh, not through the Roger. Um, maybe Lesmo one. There's a yeah, first Lesmo. Yeah, just lost the rear. 
it's just those tyres have just never really recovered from that first lap, have they? And, uh, no, yeah. and he's got them for the rest of the race. <laughs> So it's just making them worse as well. That's the trouble. You know what he probably we should don't... do? Come and pit for new tyres because he's two laps ahead of 14th place anyway. Yeah. You don't want to stack it and, and have to retire. Tire, exactly that. Yeah, exactly. He's lost the lead now, isn't he? He's not going to get it back. Especially with about 10 laps to go. You might as well come in and just be safe. But having said that, new tyres are probably... It could be the enemy because it was just a terrible outlap. That's really what it was. It's... I've never seen an outlap as bad as that, I think, ever. No. Um, and that's that's not... I don't mean that to be nasty or anything, but it really wasn't good. And, I mean, come on, we, we cover the BSRTC. We've seen some dodgy driving over that time. <laughs> but, yeah, to say some, at least. <laughs> Four seconds was the gap at the end of the previous lap. 30.6 for Padovani. You know what? Fine. I, I'm going. I, I'm going to say, like lap after lap, it seems like it seems like the new tyres are paying the dividends. Sam, that we that we weren't we weren't 100 percent sure it was a good idea, but I, you know, in hindsight, it looks great. Yeah, I certainly wasn't convinced at the time. I think it probably cost him about probably about 10 seconds, I think, which I, I didn't think it would be worth it. But his stability out there and his his pace is really quick. I think Spolstra after that spin, it might just be the tyres going off slightly. But I, I think he did get a little bit of damage there. I think it's cost him down the streets because earlier on he was comfortably in the 1 minute 30s. And now, he, I, don't, I don't think since that spin he hasn't hit a 1 minute 30s. He's constantly in like the mid the two ones. So I think he's kind That's of a yeah, bit of air damage. So. Yeah, so I think that's possibly what's cost him. That spin really will go down as the error that has uh, perhaps cost them this uh, race victory. It's funny, isn't it? Because the, the Porsche, we, we were having a look at it, Alex, and there's a few Porsches out there that have had some contact. You can't see any damage on any of them. Like, it's, uh, you know, like they, they seem to have got away with it a lot more than, say, the Audis have, and definitely a lot more Ferraris have. Yeah. Yeah, it's... some. I mean, some cars just don't look like they get damaged quite as much do they i think that's the thing yep and yep. uh you know others just uh, get absolutely destroyed so right what i've just brought up on on screen then is just a mini map of where the leaders in second place are as well in all of the uh all of the classes uh, and unfortunately it's gonna be quite hard to distinguish between the um uh between the am category as they're also green at the moment so yeah has ty kim spun again i hope not And I think he's okay. It it's wasn't okay. a brilliant lap last time round, but it wasn't too far. Oh, I think it was still the I think it was the earlier lap. I just saw on the chat there was some things there, but but um the yeah we can see the the map on the screen and and it does show that the um. As well, we, we don't want to forget about the, the HPD, uh, <laughs> the only HPD runner that's still going, and that's Paul Sill. Um, started in 10th, up to 7th. Three positions gained, so not a bad um, not a bad effort. And um, might just scrape 6th place, actually, because the 11 car's in the pits again, Sam. So. Yeah, he's about to go by him as well, I think. Might just be able to get um, he's three laps behind the total downforce racing um, Porsche. Only one lap, I think, now, isn't No. Oh, yeah, so, yep, you're right. So, two laps down. Two laps. Yeah, should get him. I don't think Hayden Pistorius in the total downforce racing car is going to come back out, so should quite comfortably take that sixth overall. I mean, it won't... It's obviously not the most pressure that Paul Searle's ever been under, Alex, but... Um, it does, you know, it does show a testament to him and uh, Peter Smith that they've just they've got on with it, and especially in in the um, second half of the race, they've just been careful with the car and they've not hit anything, and you know. So you've got to keep going, haven't you? Even though you know you you get the win, you know you got to keep going, um, avoid getting penalties, maximise the um, the points oh, you can get out of this one in the background. Peter, that? Peter Bryan has spun. The 25 Ferrari has, has gone around at the exit of Curve de Lesmo.
That was quite a uh, stylish slide. Lost it quite early on and uh, just managed to hold the drift. Kind of throughout the corner and then just on the exit over rotated. Oh yeah, absolutely flew around that. I saw it in the background. That's what, that's what caught my attention. It was just all over the shop. Teams aptly named last minute racing and they wait till one of the last minutes to have a spin. <laughs> that's it. Well, it won't be spinning. It's not spin to win today. We're not doing the Wheel of Fortune. Um, it's spin to the bin for the last minute racing team, I think. In the bin and 28 laps down. And 11 laps down on the class leader. Just not checking in with the uh, GT class leader, actually. Just uh, brought him up on screen. Yeah, David Sim Sports, uh, 79. What a great job. And Yana Sturge. I believe that's how you say it. The geodesic racing black car is in second place. They're at Curva de la Roggia, so it's about 30 seconds difference, Sam, between them. Yeah, good comeback from uh, Nathan Parkinson. Um, we, we've said a few times how he spun early on, and that it, it really did cost him. Uh, whilst it was just one spin, he had he'd lost about 30 seconds straight away, just then cars passed, and then having to make his way back through the traffic cost him, I think, another 15 seconds. So. He lost about 45 seconds just from a little clumsy spin uh, after locking the rear tyres. It, it was one. just because he, and and again, you know, I don't I don't want to keep harping on about this thing, but I think if he'd have just slightly reversed around to the left, he could have got back on the course after about five seconds. Yeah, yeah. I think and, that he, would, and he yeah, waited, yeah. waited, waited, and I mean, you don't. The, the thing is, it, it's. It sounds like Alex, I've been a bit unfair on him, but because when sometimes when you have a spin, you don't always have that extra capacity to. You, you're just thinking, oh God, I've spun, I've spun, I've, everyone's coming through. You don't always think, oh, if I just reverse here, I'll be able to get on safely. Yeah, that's it. And you just you're don't just think about bit, that. Yeah, and you're just going to be of a panic mode, don't you? you? Have a bit of red mist kicking because you're kicking yourself for actually making the smoke mistake, and and you don't want to hit anybody else when you're coming back on. And and think, I think he might look back at it and he might see from. If you see the broadcast view of it, I think you'll think he's a bit silly, but again, you know, you can't blame him for, you can't blame him really for something that not a lot of us ever really have the awareness to, to do, so, especially and that, me. And actually had a good race still at the end of it, like, uh, was it, I'm not quite sure as much as what, um, what's house of their 45 seconds, it was a long time. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> but enough that actually it would have put them in contention at this particular point. I think there would mm. definitely have been within like one little mistake sort of range. So oh yeah, massively, uh, massively, uh, and and that's just and again, you know, it, it's the story of this race, isn't it? One mistake. It's either been one mistake from some drivers, or it's been consistent mistakes and not learning from them for for the others. So really fascinating race to watch and, and I know you know we're not going to have a lot of time at the end of this broadcast but I'm, I'll get it out of the way now Alex I think I've really really enjoyed this four hour race I think it's been brilliant yeah it's been good trying to work out what's going on because I know um, you're not always the mass, a massive fan of the long races and, and you no, know for you, for you to enjoy it it must be a really good race so. yeah exactly it's kept me it's kept me on it I haven't been um, I haven't been had eyes watering with uh, with boredom that usually happens with the <laughs> races. Yeah, so uh, it's been good. Sam, would you say the same? I, I mean, I, th I think it's been brilliant. There's lots of little stories that have been um, really interesting to follow. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the, in both the GTE Pro and the and the AM actually and the LMP ones, super tight battles from the the front of the field, and then we've also had some kind of race long battles towards the back of the field as well. And, like like we said a few times, how pretty much everyone out there has made an error. I'd say probably Paul Searle in the Fusion cars, probably the only car which hasn't had like a spin or a crash. So credit to them for that. I, but I everyone totally else has had speak a too soon. <laughs> Just quickly as well, yeah, because it almost you Two almost minutes. nailed it because um, Jefferson Padovani has flirted with the gravel two or three times on this lap and doesn't need to be going this quickly. Seven and a half seconds clear, so he just needs to. Uh, needs to pipe down and uh, yeah and, and just just keep it on the grey stuff that's all you need to do Spolster's given up but I mean I'm not surprised really and then um, I mean I, I think like Sam said I think that the car is damaged and 
you know, from that from that spin. The fastest lap since the fastest lap before the spin was two laps before, 129.7. I remember we said we said that was the fastest lap of the race. Fastest lap since the spin, Alex, 131.1. Yeah. Remember he has pitted and put more fuel in, so naturally gonna be a bit slower anyway because of the extra weight and but he was two seconds slower after yeah. before he pitted. Yeah. So uh, he, he was doing 31s yeah. uh, after, yeah. after he spun, so it was... It's, yeah. It's just, again, you know, it just makes it even something. more costly, doesn't it, those, you know, that, that issue. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, you know, but again, that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of endurance racing. You know, you can you can make lots of mistakes and still win some, or you can make one mistake and lose. Yeah, and because uh, what's really cost them in this, like, what loss that's cost them maybe oof, 15, 20 seconds? The big thing, of course, for them to come from uh, one and a half laps down, that uh, more like two, two, two and a quarter, two and a half minutes lost there. So that will be, you know, where, where it's gone wrong. We, we, we're yeah. not quite sure what the, the, he, he signed up as the wrong car, didn't they? I believe so. Which I mean, which brings into my if they if they signed up as the Audi, he did the Dennis Melcher, and then turned up in the Porsche. You think they've got no time to set the car up, so they've just basically thrown on a low downforce setup and gone with it. Which is probably yeah. why in qualifying it wasn't that great. They had to qualify, they had to start at the back anyway. They had to figure but then out how the car was. To, yeah. to figure out roughly what to do and come through and learn. Both drivers have gone through that. Martin started off a little bit slower, got to grips with the car and started really quick. Boris the same was a bit slower. We were like, oh, he's not quite as quick as Martin, but then I ended up going a little bit quicker, putting in the fastest lap yeah, of the race. Yeah, so yeah. it's been an absolute phenomenal drive, and we're not taking anything away with the little mistake. I just we just we, just we have think, to point out that that's the case. That that's how yeah, I did lots what the a story it would have been for them to have done that and won this race. It was there, but it was one little mistake that that that's denied them of it of that absolute pure, you know, excellence. But it does it the. The other drivers in this series, yeah, they know what they're up against for the rest of the season now. These, look these, at that this pairing go, is extremely wow. quick, and they're going to have to really work at it. You never know, they might even keep the Porsche. <laughs> they might right, be. so we've reached the four-hour four mark. Where is our leader? He is going through the Lesmos. This is going to be the final lap of the race, guys. Yeah, and... Um... You know, there are no foregone conclusions in endurance racing. Just ask Toyota about that from a couple of years ago. 23 hours and 59 minutes of excellence and one minute of despair. And um, Jefferson Padovani now just has one corner to go. And he won't be despairing at all. He'll be elated. He come through the final corner and after taking over from Rodrigo in Prota de Silva, Jefferson Panavani is going to come through for Porsche and there's going to be another lap. <laughs> there's no chicken flag. There you go. <laughs> Four hours. Right, two... Time's up. No chicken flag. The guy with the flag's out having to do somewhere. Four hours, two minutes is actually the session time, of course, because of the uh, the, the, the pace laps that gets added on. So, yeah, there you go. Ta -da! We like to be tricked. <laughs> so they had an hour to set the Porsche up, apparently. Yeah. So there we go. We yeah. have reached the, 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 the mark now. So so that is still a fantastic effort to say they had an hour to an hour to do yeah. set up on it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it doesn't devalue that too much, I must admit. So where is I'm just going to see where everybody else is. So Cell is. I gave him the far. big one as well on the the you know the final lap. Yeah. <laughs> and oh off 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 goes, you and Meredith, right in front of the leader on the last lap. <laughs> Padovani's going to need the change of underwear. I think yeah. uh, Sam just you know either that or he'll need visit to A and E after this for heart problems. Yeah, Meredith could have so easy have spun back into the course. Of Palavani, I think Palavani probably saw that lifted off the throttle, but he uh, is still safe coming through a sky. Just hope that he isn't a lap short on fuel. Looks to be fine here, going into a uh, just a uh, few few meters away from the parabolic now. Here we go then. Well, patience, young Palavani, was maybe what they would have said when he took over the car from De Silva. But here he comes. He's through. Jefferson Palavani takes the checkered flag and becomes the master of Monza. Brilliant performance. Holtstra in second as well. Great drive from him. 
what an um, what an amazing story still to get on that podium. Um, got uh, Paul Searle as well. He's going to come across. Is he going to come across ahead of uh, Sanchez? I know it's going to be close between them, but I think Sanchez is going to come across the line to win the GTE Pros first, closely followed by uh, Paul Searle as well, who takes the LMP2 class. Where is our AM yeah, leader? Pitcher for Yana Sturge. And Paul Searle. That's a great that's that's a great time for Ava Simsport, isn't it, Sam? Two class victories in that. Yeah, they yes, literally come perfect. across the line at the same time. Sorry. Uh, sorry, Sam. Yeah, so um I, I think actually they uh I think Janos just waited um a, a little bit to uh, cross the line uh, alongside uh, Paul. So um yeah, nice little photograph for them and uh, very it, successful day. Um, uh, sorry, Sam, that was just my mouth going. Uh, not my brain wasn't engaged. Is Hermosel still the leader of the AM? He is. And here he comes then. He's just got the... Um, He's a lap ahead of the whole field in the end, actually. Everybody else got was behind the um, behind the leader. So. And he's just taken the geodesic racing gold car that's well down and has been well down since... Was that the car that blew its engine earlier on? I think it might have... Uh, I think it might have been, but into Parabolica for Jose Antonio Hermoso and his partner Juan Carlos Marquijano. Going to take the win here. Don't forget as well in the 19 car, Peter Smith was the original driver in that one. Don't forget the part that he played. And over the line comes Hermoso to seal it for Ferrari and to seal it for Wildersim Racing GTE for the AM category. Well done. Brilliant. I believe everybody has come across the line, so I'm going to take you through the um, results in just a moment. But yeah, Sam, sum that one up for us. Yeah, I'll try to. Um, really, uh, yeah, great battles in both of the uh, or, or, of all the classes. Even the uh, P2s are quite entertaining initially, didn't they? Uh, oh, unfortunately, yeah. that kind of fizzled out with uh, the accident for uh, for the uh, other P2. Uh, team, but in the LMP1 and the GTE, just superb battling out there, wheel to wheel action, and also the strategy as well. It was difficult to kind of keep up to date with all of it with uh, the different fuel strategies in both of those classes, but in the end, um, perfect strategy for Padovani and just about beat Spolstra, who uh, yeah, had a brilliant drive, and then also uh, Sturks and uh, Parkinson and Blanco uh, kind of dominates in that GTE pro field. See, I, I think that. Um the P2 battle would have been really close. I mean, Alex, they were they were evenly matched, weren't they? They were very much so all through that race. So, and just uh, unfortunately fell away for Delta, and then um, yeah, they. It's funny. It seemed like they were in the fight for so long. They actually um, retired 75 laps ago. So, um, so how far we did in the end? The leaders, well, they completed 155 laps, which is almost uh, Alex three. Full Grand Prix distances. Yeah, it's pretty pretty good going. A lot of, and that's well over 550 miles, or just about 550 miles, I believe. So, uh, yeah, unbelievable performances all around. And I have the we'll results. Take, yeah. I'll take you through the finish. No, yeah, so the BO Racing Car, 68 of uh, Jefferson Padovani and Rodrigo Improta da Silva takes the, um, takes the victory by eight seconds over the 24 racecraft racing LMP1 Martin Van Lusenord and Boris Spolstra the Sim Experience Element Sim Racing water car was in third 35 seconds behind that's Marcus Walmuth and Kai Uwe Basner uh, fourth place for Ether Sim Sport that was Ewan Meredith and Samuel Prince Reverend Racing Audi with Paul Morris and Luke Pfeiffer they finished in Fifth place, Paul Morris doing the, the yeoman's work there in that occasion. Paul Searle and Peter Smith winning the category in the LMP2, the HPD. Uh, on the face of it, it looks like, well, of course they won the category. They didn't have any competition, but it was a hard-fought race for two hours um, at least with the Delta I racing team who really pushed them and were in the lead at, at one point. And um, the total downforce racing, car 11, they had a bit of a turbulent race. Riley Thompson, Hayden Pastorius... And then in the GTEs, car 67, Ava Simsport number 79 took the win, which is a bit weird. It's car 70, 
it car 79 or car 67 who knows uh, somewhere in the middle could be the right answer 73 maybe who knows um Yama Sturge and Jason Dyer the winners there geodesic racing black we saw that spin earlier on we keep going on about it but that's what cost them in the end Nathan Parkinson and Roderick Wittenberg a no, fantastic job Rebellion Racing Sport car 18 that was Guillermo Osuna and Tony Blanco they were very good throughout and maybe um, maybe deserve better than third Sim Experience Elements Sim Racing Fire were next with um, Dennis Andlauer and Sebastian Gescher then it's the World of Sim Racing GTE car 151 Jose Antonio Hermosel and Juan Carlos Macchiano Reverend Racing Ford was next and that was Ty Kim and Elliot Roberts. And then we had Racing House Online with um, Noe Avis Jimenez and Avro Rabanal of Italy. And then it's the World of Sim Racing Junior, Ferrari with um, Ruben Escribal and Antonio Jose Catenia Amescu. And then it was the 348C VP3 Competition car with Matthias Milano and David Ruiz. Rebellion Team 2 were next, Victor Suarez Rivero and Marcus Calvo. And then it was the uh, 25 laps down, was the 23 over Simsport number 9 uh, number nine LMP1 car, Sven Neumann and Pascal Stix. And the last minute racing, Ferrari, they had a bit of a nightmare, 30 laps down, Jacob. Boshov and Peter Bryan and then Geodesic Racing Gold they also re they they didn't retire actually they, they did get to the end um, but I believe they blew the engine Nicholas Souza and Andrew Langham GP2 engineers well they were leading for so long and then Govan Keeney decided to have flying lessons and uh, that ended their afternoon Tim Griven was his co-driver and then Delta I Racing Team Prototype finished in 22nd place with Miguel Garcia Sanchez and Chris Santizo. And then it was the 14 Reverend Racing Porsche. That was Volker Melfeld. Um, and it was supposed to be Arjuna Cancapati, but he didn't actually make it into the car, the, the American. So that yeah, was a shame for him. Uh, Proteus Team 95 Ferrari, they crashed in um, Parabolica in the end and end up getting absolutely wiped out by the Audi. In fact, that was uh, the um, uh, that was the Reverend Racing Audi, I think, wasn't it? They, them. That was Dmitry Denisov and Nikolai Bogacharev. And then Delta I Racing team were in 25th. Oya Yugo and it was supposed to be with him um, just looking down the list. Alejandro Rodriguez Chavez, who he was the one, uh, they ended up getting disqualified, and Paul Chavez was the one who ended up with the disqualification against his name. And uh, Javier Tinajo did not take the start. I assume maybe, Alex, that would possibly be because he didn't have a co-driver, co I imagine. Yeah, quite possibly. Right, so... Um... I don't, well, I don't, I'm not sure um, Stefan had the, the our Discord server, so I've just posted that on there, although I think we are going to wrap things up at the minute, but if you guys get registered for the next race on our Discord server, then you can come and jump in for an interview on, on the following, we, following rounds, but we are about done, I think, on time. because yeah, we've got to go and turn around fairly quickly for our next broadcast, which will be um, 8 o'clock or 8.30? 8.30. 8.30, and that's BSR Grand, IMSA Grand Tour. So we'll be around for that in just over an hour's time. But for now, from Monza and from the VTEC Super Series, from Andrew Woodhouse, from Alex Simpson and Sam Fitzpatrick, it's good night, and we will see you in the next one.